All right. Get down to business. Cool. So we have a bunch of crits to get over with the uh, with the Discord. So let's just get those crits out of the way. We can then review on Discord and then start on our two studies. Two studies in question today are going to be these two over here. Number one, number two. And uh, that's just some reference for us for to use later on. But we are indeed going to be doing this crit. Let me just get out of my studio mode because I was editing a bunch of things on OBS before we started. Okay, that's regular old OBS. We are ready to go. So I have a bunch of things to look forward to. I'm going to quickly crit them. Uh, we'll keep maybe, uh, let's say, 10-ish. 10 10-ish 10 minutes and everything. How about that? 10-15. Get through it and then start the, uh, the studies. Bumble, thank you. I appreciate that. Thanks for signing up the stream. So uh, so generous. But I do appreciate that. How's it going, Shades? How's it going, Abs? How's it going, Bumble? Good to see you guys. Okay, let me just toggle this border. And let's get to it. Okay. So, number one. I should have probably written the names for all of these. I'm just going to have Discord open in the background. Just so I have the names of the people. So, this is... Uh, okay, Kraken. Kraken's the boy right there. Kraken started drawing, um, you know, before he... Uh, I mean, he started drawing all three metas on this channel, so... He's gonna be uh, pretty good someday, I guarantee it. Oh, I believe fuck. in him. I can't believe you've done this. Asthmatic Ashley, I appreciate that, thank you. Okay, so this is Kraken. Kraken's a cool dude. Dude, thanks for the uh, for the sub. Very generous of you. I do appreciate that. Okay, so now we're figuring out what the issue with the eye. Now, he didn't give me any accompanying comment with this particular critique. However, uh, we'll just go with it generally. So, the main point, since I always like to have a main point. Let me stop my timer real quick. Sorry. So the main point of this quit is going to be iconography versus actual drawing, right? So, what we're trying to avoid as a realistic artist is this idea of iconography. Iconography, if I can remember how to spell. There you go. So what does this really mean? That means that you tend to draw things oftentimes the way that you perceive them to be as opposed to the way they actually are. And now you might ask the question, what's the difference? Well, the way that you think something is, is not necessarily the way you actually, it actually is in reality. And eyes are a very, very good example of that. Because when you say eye, you think about this kind of shape, right? Big old iris, you know, big old cornea, big highlight in the middle, but then you have eyelashes around it, right? Which is a very novel very simplistic and also wholly inaccurate way of looking at it so as we progress into becoming more and more realistic and more and more you know accurate with our drawing then we try to think more about the idea of form and construction as opposed to just just draw things the way we think they look and that's what i would try to maybe direct you over here so i'll break this down using the asaro simplification and you guys know i really told asaro so the asaro head is a simplification of the planes of the head and it is an incredible tool for artists to use in order to get, get a better understanding of exactly where things are pointed. So I'm going to use the word plane a lot. And a plane is just an oriented surface. So it's just saying which direction certain things are pointed. Because that's really important for you to know. Because if you're ever wondering how do I shade something, how do I add form to something, if this is ever a question, the answer resides in how well do you recognize the planes of the object. Because if you do not recognize these planes, then things go a bit awry, because if you don't know where things are pointing, how can you say how it reacts to light? It's much more difficult. So a much more planal breakdown of this, I will find to be a lot more superior. How do I know there's no planes here? Because everything is uniformly shaded. So unless the eye is entirely in darkness, this is never going to be the case. So what do we think about when thinking about the planes of the eyes? Well, when you think about any plane, the first thing you should think about is the idea of everything having a left, a forward, and a right plane. I think this is a very, very basic way of looking at it. Also, it has a, a top and a bottom. So basically, every complex shape, like a cube, for example, has these kind of these shapes, right? So it has a front, it has a back, it has a left, a right, a top, bottom. So we have these facing planes. So what does that really tell us? That tells us that when light is coming from the left-hand side, let's say that's coming from that side, that means the front has the chance to get some light on it, and the right, that is the face opposite to the direction of the light source, that goes into darkness. So that's what that means. And the same concept is evident on the eye. If I was to break down the eye into a basic shape, it would be something like this. So I'd start with the square, like that, and I'd bring it down like this. This comes from Marco Bucci's paid workshop on drawing the head. So the simplification of the eye could be like this. So you start with just a square like this, and that would be the uh, the reveal portion of the eye. And on top of this, we can build in a very, very basic plan breakdown of the eye. And it goes like this, okay? So we start like that. We go one, two, three, and then one, two, three. Maybe I should have made the square a bit lower. So go one, two, three. So basically, when I just draw the planes from there, really, really quickly, not trying to be 
clean with this. This reveals something that might be obvious, may not be obvious, but I'm going to just be thorough with this. So the idea is, is that there's a ball over here, the ball, and there's these giant lids on top of those. And remember, these lids, they're little cubes, so they actually have a bottom plane. And that's actually important to realize, because especially on this bottom lid, sometimes you ever see those eyes that have this crazy highlight on the bottom right over here? Well, that's actually the, the top plane of this bottom lid. So there's a shape right there. There's a cuboidal shape right there with the top edge. And that's what's creating that highlight. Anyway, moving on to this idea. So we have a left, we have a forward, we have a right, we have a left, we have a forward, we have a right. What that means is that when light comes from, let's say, the right, right? That means this plane, which is the left plane. Remember this breakdown? That means this left plane is going to be completely in the shadow. And perhaps this front plane is mildly in the shadow. And this right plane is going to be extremely in the light. The same thing goes for the eyeball itself. Even the ball is a sphere, right? So this, this pen's going to go into the shadow, right? And remember, the eye is not just, it's not just this location. The eye is so much more than that. Because we need to remember all the parts that can contribute towards the eye socket. Now, these parts are not limited to just the eyelids and this portion called the lacrimal caruncle. That's the tear duct right there. It's not just limited to this idea. It also involves all of the, the motions of the brow towards the side. So when you think about the human body or the human face from the side, so we just draw a quick little profile. Right, so an eye comes on the side like that. Remember, don't draw an eye like this from the side. The eye looks like this. We have front-facing eyes because we have predators. So the eye goes like that, right? So what's really important to understand is that a lot of the contributors to this particular shape, they don't come from just the eye itself, but also this whole region over here. And that's the brow, the brow right there. So the underside of the brow is going to be a big contributor to exactly what the eye looks like, because as it turns out, um, this little shape over here will be obscured. So just like we have the lid going front or up, I'm sorry, that's, that's left, that's front and that's right. And this is left. Well, technically the lid goes down here. This is the top side of the lid. That's left, front, and then right. Just like that, we have another big shape here, which is the shape of the brow. And the brow goes like this, right? It goes, I'm just gonna do it very basically, but it goes left like that, it goes front, and it goes right. And what happens here is that very often times, because this is ahead of this, because that's, it looks like this from this angle, right? It looks like that, it comes above. So this basically is the bottom side. So this over here is the glabella, this over here is your brow, and the bottom side of the brow. So this, if I was going to shade it really harshly, that's the bottom side of the brow, and that's the top side of the brow. So top and bottom. The bottom side of the brow is coming downwards that way, okay? And that comes over the eyelid. So when you draw this kind of thing, this goes on top, and oftentimes you see a very, very strong occlusion right here. Occlusion is basically where light is kind of trapped, it can't really escape. Rather, it can't really enter is uh, more accurate. So it kind of gets trapped over here, and it goes here, and maybe the brow kind of lets go a little bit, so you see a little bit of that edge of the eyelid over there. So what generally happens is that if I was going to draw the eye really quickly, so I draw like, like this maybe, and that's the eye layer. That's just the eye, right? So the brow, most of the time when I'm drawing, this, drawing the eyes quickly, I just draw the, the brow with a very, very sharp and harsh line like that, because the brow comes over. So this is layer one, and this is layer two. This goes underneath and it gets revealed maybe on this side that goes over for people that hail from like asian countries this brow will overlap the entire lid so you don't see any of these lids and also the entire eye itself is much more front faced it's much it's less sunken into the eye socket which is why they have very unique looking eyes that kind of notion so how do we put that all together since we have three minutes left in the crib so we put it together which is by applying light to the drawing right so let's just say that the light's coming from the right-hand side, all right? So it's coming from the right-hand side. Then what happens is that things that are on the left need to go more into the darkness. So let's just grab a dark brush over here, and we'll select those right-facing planes really quickly. I'm sorry, left-facing planes. Select those really, really quickly. Like, And suddenly, by doing something like this, we immediately get a ton more form into the drawing. Because everything over here will be affected by the light. Have this whole area coming over here and some regions will be darker than others and to figure out why that is i really suggest you guys go through your sara simplification read through it figure out why that is and of course we haven't talked about this effect on saturation because i mean it's going to be the same effect on saturation like anything on the body 
but this is what's going to happen here. And of course, this right facing plane is going to be more into the light. So we're just bringing all of the ideas we just talked about to the drawing. Bring this into the light, bring this into the light over there. And suddenly everything starts to stand out. Everything starts to have way, way more form. This kind of idea. We bring it out like that. Right? Lastly, to complete this crit, I think the best thing to do is to look towards references which involve the face being lit from a variety of angles. Now you can just directly go towards your Asaro simplification. Alternatively, you can look at paintings done by master painters. I will do the latter, because I think more people need to be looking at master paintings. Now they have the chance to. So even though I should probably have... I have a stream deck, so I should probably set a command to get to this folder, uh, because I look at it so often. Okay, let's just look at some old masters. You know who we're going to look at already. We're going to look at Sargent. Because Sargent is just a great person to look at. His work is impeccable. But let's look at some Sargent eyes and we'll try to have the exact same breakdown, right? So 918. We can spend a few extra minutes on this because it's important. So we have this right there. That's Henry Adams from Singer Sargent. And we have some more over here. Let's look at Lady Agnew. Canvas, good to see you, man. So now here you'll notice the exact same thing happening in a few of these areas, right? Look at this for instance, you see that same thing we were talking about, light coming from the top right, the bottom left, or just the left facing planes, those are the ones that are going into shadows. This is a left facing plane of the glabella, this is a left facing plane of the eye, and now those are going into shadows, this is a left facing plane of the nose. Once you understand the construction of things, and you're able to really really say exactly where the planes are pointing and where the light is pointing that's how you accurately shade an image okay and that's my credit for this hopefully you thought it was helpful. all right next one i have to remember to export all of these by the way let me just i'm gonna make a quick little folder in my uh in my painting folder just for all these today call this crit one i'm just gonna quick export these once i'm done okay uh, we have this. Who is this done by? Okay, hopefully that export. I'm going to leave it open just in case the export fails, because sometimes it happens. Okay, I can close this now. Okay, we have this image. This image is by... Who is it by? By Yabu. Yabu is a good artist on the Discord. Okay. Also, if you guys want to submit to this, by the way, you can submit while this is going on. I don't mind. Uh, this is by Yabu, but after that, we're going to be doing some studies on the channel. It's been a while. Canary, good to see you, man. How's it going? How's, how have the pieces been treating you? Yabu, great artist. So, the first time studying without using color picking on the reference. Good job. So, I do highly recommend, as you make advancements in your understanding of color, to always try and try to develop the colors in your canvas from nothing mainly because you need to understand the relationships why certain decisions are being made and also to try and verify your understanding of how color and light works very very important stuff vital for your development as an artist now this is going to be a crit on the color so the main thing we think about in color is what how do we break down color in general so when you want to break down color this comes from nathan faux nathan faux great resource for color incredible incredible artist so faux breaks down color based on value and based on temperature. Now you need to understand what both of these things mean before we proceed. Now value in general, have I reset my timer? No, I have not, okay. So value and temperature. So what do these things mean? So value is basically the essential light and dark component of every color. Disintegrate, good to see you. So when you talk about the value, you're talking about, okay, if this image was in black and white, is it still readable? Are the amount of light and the amount of darks, are they consistent with my reference? Are they ample enough to kind of convey my reference? All of these ideas are important. So the value, that's why when people say, hey, you're trying to learn how to become a better artist. Okay, well, you need to do black and white studies. You need to do your, your shadow studies, your value studies is basically what they're talking about. So that's important. And I think your, your overall read seems solid enough. I mean, you could go a bit darker in areas like this areas like this and the nose but overall is the value sufficient yeah and also a quick little note for you somewhat me um intermediate artists out there uh i think at this point if you haven't already considered this do consider the idea of increasing the contrast on an image does not necessarily make it better in fact it's a good question to ask yourself do i actually want to have high amount of contrast because the harshness 
of extreme car uh, extreme contrast can really not just kind of ruin a good piece but also it, it kind of makes you very one-dimensional with your output so just consider that if you're not a beginner okay so in this case i think it's ample uh but we're going to talk about the temperature a little bit quicker so as you keep continuing on as you keep learning and as you keep trying to identify things you will get a better understanding a better eye to kind of figure out temperature so temperature means the essentially the warmness or the coolness of an image and things read relatively warm or relatively cool for example in this particular piece this background over here that reads relatively cool with respect to the actual pig's body because the pig's body over here is something like a warmish color and this over here is something like a coolish color right now i want you to direct your attention to over here in the background over here so now i understand intentionally muting this in the background but we can really bring some of that cool into the picture to add much more of a, an idea of color into it so we can bring in much more cools into the background so let's just say we'll grab let's grab a palette knife and we'll just get a cooler color in here and now we try and apply the cooler color you see how that kind of cuts through that darkness that, that warmness like it's so stark i think that's if you want to kind of match the colors of your reference you kind of want a little bit of this in here I'm applying it really daintily because, again, I want to, re want to retain the paintiliness of this particular piece. Because I think the piece, in terms of the finish, looks really cool. Right? I think that finish looks awesome. It reminds me of one of Canvas' pieces, almost. So, I want to retain some of that coolness. So I'm going to just make the strokes not as strict. I'm going to have a little bit of brushne brushiness into it. And I add a bunch of coolness to the image. And suddenly, we have a bit of variance. We have this new idea of cool. Not just that, but when you look at the actual picture, we see not just warmness and or not just coolness over here. I'm sorry, that is a bug in Krita. But we don't see just warmness over here and coolness over here. We also see a mild amount of purplish red right over there. A mild amount of purple. A little bit of a purple over here. So as you continue to understand, continue to mix and match colors, you will become a lot better at this notion of trying to match colors as you see them. Buyers, I don't know if I said hi to you, but hi, how's it going? So the way you get better at trying to find colors is you basically try to obtain something from a reference and then keep mixing, keep doing your best effort over here and see how close you can get, right? Because it's not that hard to try and match a color. So you can do a bunch of things, a bunch of methods to arrive with that. I personally use the Geneva method of trying to find color, which is basically the idea of you first kind of get the essential value of something. So this almost reminds me of the Nathan Fox breakdown, right? So let's just say that I wanted to get this purple over here. I know it's a purple, so let me just show you guys my color selector over here. So I know that, for example, I want to pick this blue over here. Let's say that's a nice stark color. I want to figure that blue because the blue is missing and it's a good component. Because you see how your eyes are drawn to that location over there because of the color contrast. So I want blue. So firstly, I roughly try to match that value. So let's say the value is approximately maybe around here right because it's lighter it's clearly lighter than this portion of the dog comparable to this value so i can even start right there that's probably how i do it in a painting i would say that it's around this value and i'll bring it up a little bit so it has some amount of like fidelity against it or some amount of distinguishness distinguishing characteristic against it so i'll start right there right and then let's just say that i stuck with this color initially because it doesn't matter how wrong my initial guess is and the better that i get the better my initial guess is. So this wouldn't be my initial guess, but let's say for the for the purpose of this particular drawing, we'll say it is. So how did I find this value? I said this value is relatively close. Remember, when you draw with value, comparison is key. It is king. You need to be comparing every single time you paint. Because if you don't compare, you're bleeding time and you're bleeding effort for no reason. So do compare when you're drawing. It is, it's just all around a good thing to do. Okay. Because you don't want every every color and every value to be unique necessarily some of them can be to make a statement but if every stroke is like a different color or a different value your piece is going to look messy so you want to avoid that and it's not just not anybody paints nobody just mixes a color does a one stroke and then mixes another color and does another stroke nobody does that i mean i'm sure there's somebody that does that but generally speaking for our intentions we don't care about that elena good to see you how's, how's it going so i start right there so you find the value you fix the value value seems okay and then you ask yourself a question this is the color that i chose is this color Warmer or cooler than this color? And I say warmer, which means I need to go more towards that blue. Okay? Apply the color again. Ask myself the question again. Is it warmer or cooler? I still say warmer. I go maybe over here. Ask myself the question again. Is it warmer or cooler? I can't tell. Maybe I need to slightly adjust the saturation. Right? I'm going, going over there maybe. So I think I'm around where I need to be. Something like that maybe. That's where I'm going to go right now. You see that kind of matches almost... To where i want to be right so i would say that this over here 
Maybe I'll bring in a bit more desaturation, a bit more darkness. Like that. And then for the lighter color, I'll just bring it to a lighter value because that seems comparable with this. I'll bring it to a lighter value. Maybe I'll push it a bit more towards the green. And that's how I would paint that, right? One and two. So think about the value and then think about the temperature. And that's the idea. And remember that you get close. I'm not saying you're going to get it perfectly, but remember that's not really the point, right? Because ultimately we don't want to be ever sampling colors because this is a great way for an add a statement. You see, that's, that's three strokes of paint. One, two, three. And we already got a huge distance out of the way, right? A huge distance has been already, already accounted for. Because again, we just picked the colors well. That kind of idea. And the same thing goes for over here, right? I could just hue shift this for the purposes of explanation. But remember, like I said, the better you try to eyeball this, or the more you try to eyeball this, the better you will get. You pop are welcome. So over here, for example, you have that little dull purple. So I'd bring that to more of a red, just like this. I'd bring it to more of a dullish purplish red, just like that. See how that kind of adds the fidelity? We don't want to be too homogenous with our color decisions on a, on a camera ever, because again, we're trying to represent nature, we don't want to perfectly capture what it is more than the impression that it leaves, right? And this will be a really good place to do it because in realistic art, we are somewhat restricted in a lot of things in terms of proportion and even value to a certain extent. But when it comes down to your interpretation of your edges and your color, you have way more liberty. Because take somebody like Sargent, for example, we were talking about him earlier. Sargent was almost called impressionistic uh, towards the end of his life because he went way off the board with his ability to kind of convey things and abstract things, right? They, they call him almost like a hybrid artist at certain points, which is true to a certain extent, but nobody would ever argue that Sargent's work never looked realistic, right? In the same way that nobody's gonna argue your work doesn't look realistic even if you put pink on a pig that's usually brown, that kind of idea. So you have some leeway of interpretation. Sometimes when you see me doing studies of horses or something like that, I'll say, okay, I'm gonna, tur I'm gonna turn the coat cool instead of warm. And I'll just switch the entire palette around and the piece itself will still work just because of the idea that okay well I have my values and my proportions right so my edges they don't particularly matter and my color doesn't really matter all that much look at any of um, famous artists watercolor work like Sargent for example um, and look at some of Zorn's work for example this is oil paintings like it's crazy the amount of colors they can use in certain areas and you just don't question it you're like oh that looks real in reality, that purple, you never see that purple in your life. It doesn't exist in the real world. That's kind of cool. So again, let's see how we're adding all those, all those beautiful, beautiful temperature changes over there. And there's a bunch more, right? And not to mention, here's my last note since we have one minute left in the crit. But the last note over here is never ever underestimate the power of grays on a canvas. Especially when the canvas is reading too homogeneously. And this is a note out there for you artists that draw from imagination. Um, it's so important to think about the grays whenever you can, because if you don't, then suddenly everything on the piece starts to read a little bit too homogenous, and you want to be careful about that. For example, if I wanted to cool this down over here, I could simply add a measure of gray right there, and suddenly I have this beautiful, beautiful bridge right there that I can start basing things off of. Because it's a very subtle change, right? A gray on top of a blue. It's a very subtle warm, a grey on top of a warm, a very subtle cool, that kind of idea. So, don't ever underestimate the grey. And by grey, I'm sure somebody's going to be pedantic in here, but by grey I mean just desaturate the colour. Desat That's my idea for this particular piece. Also, so you can really hamp up the, uh, the red over here, by the way. Uh, this is what I, I would, per now I'm going to talk about my personal taste, but I would just jam red in here. Because I think like over here in these little shadows over there, it's such a great place to just push some red. These kind of areas. Nice, beautiful, warm red in those shadows. Again, that's personally what I do though. That kind of idea, so I'm not going to include that. But some closing notes. Hopefully you thought that was uh, helpful. Again, the piece is by Yabu. On this code, I will make this available to you right now. Too dumb. Okay. Next, we have a drawing from Sue the Hue, two drawings actually on the Discord. So I think the question was about lights. Just reread that. 
the question here. Uh, I don't know what I'm doing here. Uh... Okay, any thoughts, just generally speaking. I want to bring one major thought in here. I'll do this one quick because we've already broken it down on the Discord. But one major thing I want to kind of bring some attention to over here is that how do you use a study for your own benefit is the big overall question. Wolf Chan has gone. So what I mean to say here is that when you get something right and when you learn something, it's very important to try and apply that information. So here's an Osara breakdown. I think this is a quite a good painting, right? Overall, I think it's an accurate Osara. I think the shadows and all that stuff, it looks pretty decent. Some values are a little bit too, uh, too strong in certain areas, but overall, I think it's a great study. I think it's a fantastic job. Um, certainly some areas over here I would maybe slightly modify the value. I don't particularly have a problem with the contrast of the speech, by the way. Again, uh, a big note towards the idea that contrast isn't necessarily good. Uh, it is good a lot of the times, but if you're an intermediate artist, you have to stop to consider. If you're a new artist, then definitely try and push your lights and darks. But if you're intermediate, then consider why you're pushing it and if it's a good idea, because that will really add another dimension to your work. Okay. Oops, kind of pull my earphones out of my computer there. Okay, so what I want to bring to attention over here, the idea is using the Asaro planes to kind of light this skull over here, right? So in the Asaro breakdown, we can clearly see, now I'm going to assume that these two things are lit in the same condition, right? Because the same, they seem to be right, right lit, and if they're not, it's fine. This is going to be a good explanation of this idea. So in the Asaro simplification, we see that the left side of the face, remember the idea of left, right, front, top, bottom, all of these different notions of planes, again, plane is an oriented surface, very clearly described over here because this plane is entirely left, this plane is entirely forward, and the plane on the right is entirely towards the right. We can't see because it's obscured. But the lighting is coming from this kind of direction, from maybe top right. So therefore the left plane of all the objects, that's the left plane right there, that's the left plane right there, that's the left plane right here. All of these go into the darkness as well as these bottom planes because it's top right. right? So the bottom planes of certain things are going. Now using the exact same logic and going all the way up to the skull over here now we seem to have a little bit of a lack of the same amount of coordination here right because i would much rather see all of this heavily simplified because we have a very clearly indicated right plane i'm sorry left plane over here so what i really expect this kind of drawing is it to be much more clearly indicated in terms of the value here so we don't even have to put any detail in here but i would expect to see at least the same amount of like clear color coordination i'm sorry clear value coordination in these areas Immediately when we do that, just simplify those areas, and suddenly we add much more dimensionality to the, the uh, skull. For example, Charlie would call that the facsimile of light, in the sense that it looks like there's some light and some shadow, but there's not enough for it to really corroborate the actual skull. There's not enough information there for us to actually tell us, okay, well, that's where the light's coming from. So we need a bit more, in, like a bit more markers in there, a bit more pieces of information in there to really tell us where things are. And once we figure out those initial little markers, then we can kind of add a little bit of detail in here. I'm gonna grab, I'm gonna grab your dark shapes over there. And drop some talks over here. Now things are a little bit more clear in terms of the overall idea, right? And of course we have some internal darknesses right there. And I'm using a big, big fat brush for this. But these kinds of ideas. So much, much more clearer in terms of the direction of the light source. This sort of idea. And you, you only have that correctly done is the thing. Because that's, that looks good to me. That looks fine. So kind of maintain that same amount. You see how beautifully simple you have this plane? Because this, all the complex little changes and all the little planar shifts in the skull over here in this particular study is way more complex than over here. But the odd thing is you've chosen to retain a bunch of value in here. Make too much consistent sense. So think about that. Think about using that same amount of simplification in other studies. But it's fine. You're just organizing your thoughts right now. But there's a nice little piece of information on that particular thing. Hopefully you think they're helpful. All this is going to be available on video, by the way, guys. So if you need to leave anything, I will have a link in the stream uh, or in the Discord for you after we're done. Okay. Let's just uh, get rid of this now because we're done with that. Okay. Uh, let's look at this one. The bird one, who's the spy? Is by Shades? By Solmir. This is a very quick one as well, it's just a single question. As I remember it from the Discord. Oh, this is from Para, awesome. So Para asks us a question, if you guys 
need the question again. The question is, um, I'll read it paraphrased. Like, how come the area in the shadow directly underneath the beak that's here, how come this area is so warm, while the area in the same shadow further down is cool? I don't get it. So basically what Power is telling us is he's saying that, okay, well, why is this area over here warm? And why is this area over here cool? Even though they're both in the same shadow. That's an interesting question. So that it comes from our understanding of how color and light work on a piece. Now, there could be a, a couple of explanations for this, but we'll go with both of them, just for the sake of completion. Timer here. So again, this has to be able to go back all the way to the beginning, which is the origin of color, right? So where can we expect color to happen on a piece? Now, we have very, very clear notions of where this can come from, which is number one, it could be the local color, right? Number two, it could be the color of the light source. And number three, it could be bounced and diffused. Oftentimes, it is a combination of all three of these things. The light source color interacts with the local color and the bounce diffused interact in the shadow. Those kinds of ideas. And we know this from doing as many color studies as we have. Now, the question resides, how, why is this area warm over here? Now, I, I offer a few explanations for it. So the first one and the most obvious clear one, Jesus. Kyle, how's it going, dude? Thanks for the raid. I appreciate it. Welcome, guys. Hope you had a good stream. We're in the middle of doing a crit here. Uh, but hopefully you guys uh, find it interesting. But shout out to Kyle, aka Go Borgo, good friend of the channel, does studies on his stream as well. We're big fans of his work. We appreciate that raid, thank you. Uh, if you guys want to see my work, let me just quickly jump over to the Instagram, because I don't have any my canvas. But right over here, here's examples of my work. We do daily studies on a bunch of paintings. Hopefully you enjoy them. Mostly it's done between 45 minutes and an hour. That's my work right there. Enjoy. What are you working on, Kyle? The moment I slack off in my good practice checklist, some issues just become jarring. I think it's very apparent for the study again. Yeah? We will, we will look at it. Okay, so again, it's very easy for us to say the local color is the reason this particular region is going to be warm. Uh, but I offer a different explanation, which is this, it's maybe bounce light over here. So there's a bunch of warm over here on the underside of the beak. And that's warm light's going to be bouncing back into this, which is going to increase the relative warmness. Because to me, this particular material is equivalent to this material over here, which means that they're both going to be subjected to different light sources. Because there's going to be a bounce light coming from here, down there, a bunch of bounce light. And over here, that's your cool diffuse light. Remember? Which is cool light, because this bird, if you imagine this is the bird right here, all right? The bird's just sitting, it's a cube in space. That's just uh, this is a cuboid right there, just sitting there. And we have a direct light source coming from up top, right? We're just creating a shadow. Let's just say I'll, I'll draw a beak up, illustrate this point. So I have a direct shadow coming down here, right? That's going to be in shadow right there. The issue with this is that there's going to be a whole hemisphere of sky right around this. Even though there's going to be a direct light source coming from the sun up here, this is not very clear, is it? Not quite sure why the opacity is so dim on this brush. Oh, there. That's going to be the sun right there. That's the sky. But there's going to be a very clear shadow, very distinct shadow down here, and of course down here. This kind of idea. But these are both light sources. That's really important to understand. The sun isn't just a light source, the entire sky is. But this sun is your direct source. And this sky over here, that's your diffuse source. Is diffused through the entire hemispherical area of the sky, which means that we have a ton of really tiny amounts of blue light or cool light coming from every angle. Okay, every upper hemispherical angle, right? What that means is that this can't have too much of an effect in these areas, like in the areas of direct sunlight, like these areas over here are basically off limits because the sun is going to be much stronger than the sky. So the, the sun will predominate in the areas of light, which is why all of these are uniformly warmly lit. However, in the area of the shadow right over here, those areas are just ripe for this blue skylight because this is not a very powerful light, but it does occur in more angles than the sunlight, which means that this can get into shadows that this can't get into. 
right? And what that ultimately means is that your shadows can oftentimes be colored cool, even though your sun is colored warm. That's where your warm lights and cool shadows oftentimes come into being. And that's evidenced over here, because this is going cooler, right? Right over there, that's going cooler. And this is obviously warmer because it's a warm light. And now this is going warmer because one of two things, either the local color of the plumage of the bird on its throat is a lot warmer. Alternatively, the reflected light from the warm, yellow, brightly saturated beak is warming up this area over here. Because remember, the more saturated something is, the more likely it is to give off more of that bounce light. So it's either bounce, it's, it's basically a question of bounce versus diffuse, right? Because bounce light is what's warming up this, and diffuse light is what's warming up, or what's cooling down that. So it's bounce and diffused. A good question to ask, and hopefully that addresses it. A great study, by the way. Beautiful, beautiful work. Not quite sure what the time limit for this was. Assuming like an hour, hour and a half. Take a swig of water. They went for an hour. Wait, did I pull up the wrong one? Okay, Para asked the question, but you guys both, you guys both did the study. That's what that's what happened. It's good work, Shades. Fantastic job. Practicing some light on glass. Wait, let me read. Um, some light on glass. Then I pick up a ballerina. Dude, cool. Post uh, post your work. Put it in the chat. I want to see. But I'm glad you're restructuring ideas, Shades. You're gonna find yourself doing that a lot, by the way. You're gonna restructure things a lot of times. And uh, that's what I did as well. And that's just part of the process. And some things, you'll realize that when it comes to your process ideas as an artist, things will have to change depending on the better you get at certain things. So be nimble. Don't always follow the same process strictly. Uh, be mildly open to change. But there you go, that's some ideas on the color over there. Other than that, we have this piece over here by... Who is this by? What real quick? This is by Liesl, I'm thinking. Yeah, there you go, it is Liesl. All right. Let me just write the name here, because it's got to give credit to you. Liesl, Liesl, Okay, what is the accompanying comment? Comment is... I just want to try and shade with colors because I've never done that and got carried away and I kept painting without reference so I am so lost. Okay, well, uh, I do commend the idea of painting without reference. I think it's a very important thing to do. Do paint with the ref uh, whenever possible though, uh, especially as a beginner, it's pretty important. But in general, I think you did a commendable job, um, especially with the reference and especially because you haven't done any uh, paintings with color before or I'm assuming any shadows with color. I'm not entirely sure what you meant. Uh, with that, but I'm assuming that either you just pick a color and go darker, or you paint in black and white. Uh, either, yeah, you know, it doesn't really matter what the case is. Uh, let's give you some good points to think about in terms of this entire painting, right? So, one thing that I want to point out immediately is that everything is extremely saturated. And I want you to think about if that is what you want to achieve. Now, we've done master studies on this channel from ancient painters, of, and all of those studies a lot of those studies involve a high amount of saturation. Most of the time it's because of the preservation technique on the painting stained the painting, which it led to really, really warm, saturated yellows and ochres on the painting. But in general, you have to think about why this is. Now, we just talked about the origin of color. And further than that, we can talk about what we can expect on a canvas in general, because skin as a whole, two things about skin. Skin is not always extremely saturated and skin is pretty matte. And those are two important things because what it ends up being is that skin when it's in darkness doesn't always have a crazy amount of saturation it does have saturation in certain areas which i'll get to which i kind of like on your painting but in general we do want to see a bit of darkness in there because when you consider like let's consider a sphere and i'll light it in a condition similar to your painting so we'll consider any sphere over there right and we'll pick the local color of the skin which is a simpsons yellow bring that in here and we'll consider, well, maybe it's an orange, right? Same. And let's consider the light source and the shadow, okay? Light source in here. So let's, before we bring anything in here, we need to darken this up, right? Because again, I don't have light without darkness. 
Should we lighten this up on that? On this side? And let's just say there's a deeply orangish magenta shadow on this side. Emily Barkers, my goodness. Thank you for the raid, I do appreciate it. How's it going? Good to see you guys. Oh, fuck. I can't believe you've done this. <laughs> Look at all the new faces. How's it going, guys? Welcome. My name is Indiana Brother K. James. I am a study and crit streamer. Oh, I try my best to help people out to draw while this. helping myself draw in the process. If you guys would like to see some of my work, it is on the Instagram. I'm going to be doing some studies later on, but I have not streamed in the past couple of days, so I'm just catching up with people on my Discord. I do try and answer every single question, so it does take a bit of time. Uh, I've been trying to work on a portfolio on the side, so uh, it's been eating up a lot of my time, but I do appreciate that raid. Uh, what were you working on? Do let me know. Thank you for the raid, Emily. That's very, very kind of you. Me? Me? How's it going? Good to see you. I saw that eagle on someone. Hi, James. Seems like this is another video I have to rewatch for the art the art lessons. Yeah, this video will be available on YouTube later. I will post the, uh, I'll post the link. Steven's just there? I forgot who it was again. Uh, it could be. I mean, I've done a few eagles. I saw that eagle on someone. On someone? It could have been Bonnie, maybe. But I'm not sure. But I really appreciate that. Thank you so much for the raid. That's very kind of you. Some examples of my work. These are all uh, between one hour. Something like 45 minutes, one hour. We do study every single day here. No, on someone's stream? Sorry. Don't worry about it. If, if ever there's a misunderstanding, just blame it on me. I'm not the, uh, the sharpest tool in the shed, especially at this time of the night. Playing Jackbox or watching Just Dance. Awesome! Well, I do appreciate that. I do like Jackbox. That was my buddy Kate. There we go. Time is it? It is one... I'm sorry, it is 11 minutes past midnight. I'm gonna be up for maybe 8 hours doing portfolio work. Because I was working till about noon um, today, and then I crashed and I woke up at 7, and then I was like, ah oh, shit, I missed a day of work. I think I'm an Angevir's Eagle. It could be. Angevir's a dull. But yeah, we're a heavily painting focused stream, so I do apologize if this gets a bit too didactic for some of you guys. But if you have any questions on art, if you want to get into it, um, just do let me know. And uh, yeah, we can just start you off. A few people have started art in this where I'm making some huge progress. Uh, that applies for anyone, but uh, I do do appreciate that. Very kind of you. And yeah, if you want to pop your socials in the chat, you're more than welcome to. Okay, so... We're doing the script right now, I should have paused my timer. And the question over here is shading with color. Okay, so let's resume timer on this, even though I was going on this entire time. So the idea is, is that when I'm trying to de depict light versus shadow, I want a couple of things over here, right? First of all, if I look at this in this window over here, so you guys can see, uh, if I want to clearly distinguish light and shadow, it's fine if things are higher key, but look at the value in the shadow, look at the value in the light, right? There's not that much of a difference between the lightest light and the darkest dark in the image. Which means that whenever you consider the effect of light, it's not going to punch nearly as strong as you might want, right? Because I'm going to treat this entire thing as if it wasn't intentional, because people intentionally draw this way. It's called drawing in high key. That's perfectly fine. But in general, I'm at college right now, so I might have to leave soon. Don't worry about that. All the stream will be available on, on, the, on the YouTube, so you're perfectly... Uh, don't definitely get, get whatever you need to get done. Get, just get it done. But yeah, we'll be here whenever you get done. But good to see all you guys. I do appreciate that. Stonefly! How's it going, you beautiful girl? We are doing some crits right now. So, that's the first thing that we're going to point out. Let's, let's quickly address that little issue right now. So I can do this in a few ways. Let's just do this with, uh, with a bit of adjustment, right? Because I don't want to be painting everything over here. So we can just auto contrast it, which is a very quick way of doing that. And now I wanted you to pay attention to what just changed in the painting, right? So what actually just changed is this. So now we see the distance between the two things. Now we have a much greater separation in that darkest dark and the lightest light. Now the question should again be asked, and I do stress this question among everybody that is intermediate or at least getting out of that beginner phase. Ask yourself the question, is this what you want? Because that's entirely what we, ca what we care about in these kind of paintings. We care about whether or not there's someone unconscious is, is important to us. Okay, so now that we up the contrast in this area, now the next question is saturation. Now, remember the origin of color, right? So I can just quickly go over that again. So color comes from three places in a drawing. So number one is your locals, 
local color. Number two is your color from the light source. Number three is your bounce and your diffused. It's going well. How are you doing? Well, it is late in the night, but I am in high spirits. So bounce and diffuse. So what does this entirely mean? That means that color comes from what something is initially colored. So a red ball is red. It also comes from the light. So if you shine a, a yellow light on a red ball, you get a bit of a yellowish lighter patch. That's your light color. And you get a bounced and diffuse. If you put a blue cylinder next to that yellow ball, you get a bit of bounced blue on top of the uh, of the ball. And that's your bounce light. And if there's a sky around, maybe it gets a bit of blue from the sky and it's your diffuse light. What this ultimately means is that there's probably going to be way more interesting colors revealed in your lights than in your shadows. So it could be an interesting thing to think about or a strong thing to think about. Let me just switch my views over here. Might be a very important thing to think about. That's one of my pieces. To not just completely saturate every area in the uh, in the piece, but try and desaturate these areas over here. Not completely, right? But at least don't have them compete as strongly. So I'll do a slight desaturation pass on this. You can do this in a few ways. I'll just run a slight amount of grey on this. Oh fuck. I can't believe you've done this. Thank you, Narcissus. Appreciate that. So I slightly toned down that redness, right? And suddenly things don't look as competing anymore. Because now what I'm saying, what I'm trying to convey here, clearly to the viewer, remember clarity is so important when you draw the visual clarity. I'm trying to convey that okay, this is a person, her skin is yellow. And she's being subjected to a yellow light source and there is an absence of extremely strong red bounce light diffuse light or whatever but now here's a cool thing that we can add in here though because we can bring some of this red back into the painting in the form of and this is the last thing that i'll talk about since we're eight minutes into the interpret but we can bring in this idea of your subsurface scattering a subsurface is a very very cool idea and i highly suggest you guys look into it if you guys haven't already but subsurface is a way of kind of mildly adding a little bit of that transmitted light. Let me just straight paint this because I'd brush out. Okay, how about you? Here, okay. I can add a little bit of the warmness back in here in certain areas. And of course, this needs to go much, much more um, smoother of a transition. But I can add a bit of that warm in here. And that warm is basically telling us that this light is over here. So let me just quickly blend that in. So what that is doing, and this is a very, very important concept that you guys are rendering, is that that means that the skin itself, so to explain subsurface in general to you guys, this is how it works. So what happens is that your light comes from the background from your light source, wherever. It comes and it's incident onto your skin. But remember that even though your skin in general is not particularly reflective, skin is matte in general, unless it's covered in water or something, uh, but the skin is affected by this light source it might not reflect too much but some of the light does go inside it penetrates into your skin and then it starts scattering right and then finally it gets out but when in the scattering it tends to lose a bunch of its energy and it loses a bunch of wavelengths so the wavelength of the light that comes out at this point is usually of a wavelength that is much warmer so your red your oranges your yellows so what's the cool thing about that is you can have blue light coming from your light source, like in the moonlight, for example, and this has the all the wavelengths of white light. But then over here, even in blue light, you can have beautiful, warm subsurface scattering. Because the subsurface scattering of all of this is, is just saying that, okay, light's going subsurface, so inside a surface, it's going in here, it's scattering, and it's coming out. And when it comes out, it creates a beautiful, beautiful, warm, warm color. That's something I really want you to think about. This kind of idea. Let me show it to you done in a painting, let's say. Let's bring up on... Uh, let's bring the Henry Adams painting in here. Or Henry James, rather. See this in a few areas? Do you guys see... I'm not quite sure how good your monitors are. Uh, because I can't see this on my usual monitor. I can see this on my, my tablet, though. Do you see that hint of red here? That hint of saturation. So beautifully done. That hint of saturation right in these kind of areas right there. That subsurface... Right? The light's going in there and slightly warming up that transition. If you ever hear that advice, think about warming up your um, your edges on faces. This is why. It's because it's a surface, right? Kind of idea. Stopping in before my busy night. Have a wonderful stream. Dude, have a good night, carbs. I do appreciate you stopping by. This kind of idea. And you will see this. The more you look for this, the more you will see it in a bunch of work. 
That is like one of those biggest things that adds a bunch of life to paintings in general. Look at this one over here. Mild amount of saturation. Even through here, that little redness that comes through there. The best example of this you can see is if you just hold your hand up to a light maybe. Or put a flashlight right next to your hand. You see that redness in there. Right? You see mild redness around some of the smaller areas of the face as well. Some of the lighter areas because of how close the blood vessels are to the surface. Hey James, can you zoom in on the hands and then first sergeant PC? Yeah, sure. That's a great example. Hands of ideas. Yeah, how good is that, right? <laughs> it's so crazy. For me, the favorite part is about these lines of here on this pinstripe shirt. It's a great painting. What's some examples for you? There you go. So hopefully you got something from that crit. Thanks for submitting. Okay. Last crit. Eerie Canary. Eerie is a fantastic artist. I was wondering how well of a job I, I did in painting the landscape in general. I was also wondering if the trees in the back and the rocks coming to the snow make the image too noisy. Okay, let's take a look at water and look at this. Such a beautiful painting. Okay, and while you guys enjoy this, I'm going to reread his comment. Also, uh, some of these are open, by the way. I think Eerie is fine with this crits being open. So if you guys have anything to add, I'm no, I'm no expert here, right? So definitely, if you have things to add, uh, add them. Be constructive. So again, the, the comment is: I was wondering how well of a job I did painting a snowscape in general. I was also wondering if the trees in the back and the rocks coming through the snow make the image too noisy. Okay. Let's just bring some snow references in here. Talking about accuracy. James Gurney. Beautiful painting. Gorgeous. I want something a bit more somber. I lost ref. So we have something to compare to, right? We can draw back and forth. How about this? Something in a bit lower key. This is the last one. I'm gonna spend some time to actually look up some uh, some refs because I don't paint snow all that often. I can create this generally, but I like to be a bit more specific if at all. You know, my favorite thing to do when I'm looking for exact references is I think about movies where I've seen that reference or seen a, a shot like that and I Google the movie scene. Always helps. Okay, dope. That's enough rep hunting because we can do this forever. Okay, so let's go one by one. So the easy comment to solve is the trees in the back and the rocks coming from the snow make the image too noisy. Now, let's just check that compositionally, right? So we can create the first composition. So let's see if the eye actually goes here. So what's our basic idea of composition here? Is the idea of just dividing thirds, right? So where do the thirds go on this image? So it goes one right there. One, two, three, roughly. And then one, two, three, roughly. So maybe having this character be a little bit to the right, a little bit to the left is a consideration to be made, right? So right now it's somewhat slightly off-center. And I do like off-center, but maybe positioning her a little bit this way might kind of add a bit more interest because the eye would jump there a little bit quicker. And then you can kind of lead the eye a little bit using 
like little things like this, for example, you can draw little elements. That is Krita right there. Little elements like this. I gotta lead the eye that way. Kind of idea. Is how I would do it compositionally. But we can just keep it the same. Uh, question of the trees in the back and the rocks coming through the snow making the image too noisy now. Uh, it's a valid question. And we can talk about how to eliminate some of the noise, right? Because you don't need this much detail. So noise is only super noisy when things are contrasty enough to kind of demand attention from the viewer, right? So in that kind of effort, there is a lot of simplification we can be doing here because there's a lot of alternating light and dark bands over here, which could compete with the tension of our viewer. So the simple idea, the simple notion of trying to get rid of them can be a few things, right? But what I would do is just add a bit more atmosphere to the piece. Like that, maybe. Little mild changes right there, right then, right there. I'm going to think this is a secondary compositional element, so those that I'm perfectly fine with leaving there. It's also positioned as one. Remember our little grid over there? This can be easily a secondary composition element, so we just leave it as that. Now it's slightly, I want these trees to be distinct, but I'll slightly key out the background. And now a bit more attention is drawn to the view. You see that? Like this is what it was like before, after. So a little bit more atmosphere kind of adds a bit more. So the thing about this little change is that do you want atmosphere in the drawing is a big question to ask. Because you're at the level where you can ask this question. Because usually this would be a default change, but you don't have to do it this way. So you can just remove some of the trees in here or change the colors of the trees so they're not as distinct. But that's the easy fix for this idea. Right? So suddenly everything is brought more towards this foreground. Also, the character itself, while this darkness does make a lot of sense to me, I mean, she's wearing dark greens or whatever, I would like this to be a bit more visually distinct with everything else, because currently the silhouette is kind of blurring into the stairs, and we can kind of cheat this in a few ways to make sure that this doesn't happen. So one of the easiest ways, because this is a bunch of snow, and you've done it right over here, even though you don't need to right over there, because the character herself has lighter hair, so she's somewhat self-silhouetted, is the idea of we can either extend this light over there, so we can extend that light in the background, so we can do it this way. We're out. We can brighten that up. It doesn't have to happen too much, but it can happen a little bit. Brush right there. And earth is my airbrush. There it is. Have this kind of idea. Now, however you want to interpret that, that's up to you. So we have to unify this light somehow, obviously. So adding a few more streams of light somewhere or the other might make some sense. Like that, for example. Do it really quickly. That. And the idea is to get a stronger read on the character. So obviously some of these areas over here are going to be in darkness. Oh, I'm sorry, the uh, form shadow of the stairs. Is this on Discord? Yes, check the crit section. Kind of idea. And this leads to a stronger read of the character, because now the character looks, looks a lot stronger than it was before. Now in terms of direction, I think Abs asked a great question over there about the source of light. I'm going to think that it's just coming from, let's say, that way. Mm. Well, this is in shadow and that's in light, so I guess it's that way. Yeah, that, that way would make sense. Which means that we're going to have light coming, or spilling from this direction, which means we could have maybe a light coming from right over there, maybe. So we could have this idea. Just any way that you can to kind of silhouette the character a bit away from the... Uh, in the background is a good idea and you'll see a lot of artists they are very creative in the way that they cheat this out so basically just grabbing anything that i can grabbing local colors grabbing the light source grabbing whatever i can and then using it to try and increase the read on my character because the character itself is dark on a dark staircase and then that all I, all, all I did was to kind of draw much more attention to this character. Now that everything is no, so strongly silhouetted, now I can start losing detail in the legs. Now the legs don't have to be as dark. Now I can add more colors in the legs. 
character will still rage, the will still rage just fine. He's wearing like leather or something, which is easy enough to uh, paint quick. You can add a little bit of highlights right there. Add detail, you can add a bit of light there. You don't have to add as much contrast, so you have some liberty right there. Even just going, even though I don't like it oftentimes, even just going heavy handed with the frontal lights on the side, and that could be an idea to kind of add more information to that character. Overall temperature of the piece, you have these banks over here, then those banks tend to be a little bit warmer. Do I have a ref for that? Here's a canvas talking about the subsurface of the snow indeed it does exist in certain areas so kind of pushing that subsurface could be a good idea especially in corner valleys like this if not a, a yellow or not a warm at least a gray would suffice in some of these areas just throwing in a gray in some of these transitions can really help kind of add much more of a, a coolness and kind of bring in that relative warmth that we're kind of looking for in the piece bring that warmness in there that's just a gray even though it reads as a decent red that's just a gray right there so this in a few areas can really help. So not to overwhelm the piece entirely, because I do like it to read overall, overall cool, but at least maybe in the area of the character, kind of adding a bit more warmness might be a good idea. So I addressed the tree in the rock question. And yeah, the job as, as well and in general, I think is a great idea. And don't forget that you can add a bunch of speckle speckle in a snowscape and always get away with it, right? So you can add a bunch of little things like this, for example. And that kind of ups the atmosphere of the piece in general. Adding a little bit of this ideas and then closer to your character you can even add this with much more light for example it can be a kind of cheapish way to kind of drop it or get uh, attention lurks well as i work how's it going diffy good to see you four different times incredible artist see that little speckle speckle right there kind of idea Damn you and your awesome coloring skills. This is not even my piece. This is Eerie can <laughs> Canaries. With a big crit in progress thing. But these kinds of ideas can be used. And also, don't be afraid to play with the local color, even though I do understand. Also, just a quick little note. Um, since snow is white, and the relationship between lighter objects and bounce light, which is generally that lighter objects have much greater bounce light, don't be afraid to go into the piece, because this is a great thing to do. In pieces like this don't be afraid to go into the piece and add a bit of reflectiveness to some of these shapes over here it can be as subtle as you want you got a bit of that bounce light in there because it's going to happen and as an artist and when you want to get more pieces of color or more information in your pieces it's kind of really important for you to just check wherever you can about these sources of light it helps the entire piece look a lot more volumetric that's like a background of color no you don't Okay, you can just be wrong. Light over there. Light over there. So you can just go around the piece and slightly... So remember that armor piece that we painted? A while ago? The armor piece in the uh, in the snow? Same idea, to a certain extent. But there's going to be a bunch of reflectance in there. That can be an idea. And then beyond that... Now this is a great video to watch on color in general, but I highly suggest you guys watch uh, one of Nathan Fox's videos. I, I talk about this video very often on the channel. But I think it's how to achieve better color vibrancy. Color vibrancy on a piece. It's a great video. He talks about a bunch of things. One of the things he talks about is to increase either the number of local colors or the effect of bounce and diffused. So I, I just increase the effect of bounce over there. But we can also bring about more of the local color. Because this is going to be a warmish block. So even though it's in cool light, those shadows are going to go a bit more warmer. So unless this is, this is local color blue, or local color gray you can you're gonna see at least a little bit of that warmness so don't be afraid in areas like this especially it's gonna go a little bit in there and add just a teeny tiny bit of warm well, this is a very dark color it's a very dark value but you can add a little bit of that warm in there same goes with the trees trees in general at this point the bark is uh it's probably gonna be cool have a little bit of that dark in there 
Then it goes over here, right? Those roots. Those roots are gonna be kind of warm. A lot of areas we can add that warm cool that we're missing. Subtle changes. In terms of overall noise to the piece, I think they're fine. Uh, do kind of watch out for the contrast in certain areas like this. This I'm gonna I'm leaving this over here because I consider this as a secondary point in my composition of interest. But if you're gonna do this much over here, make sure that you have a competing amount over here, which you are doing with this. And I kind of painted over it slightly, but I would bring back those shadows. And at least some of the areas that I painted over, like this for example, I would bring back these shadows to add more interest. Because remember the amount of detail in certain areas is gonna really be a big element that draws the attention of the viewer. Bringing back those shadows is a good idea. Right over there. So I, can, I can leave my lights where they were, but just kind of reintroducing some of those shadows. And those are my changes. Hopefully that makes some amount of sense. I didn't make all that many changes because again, it's a beautiful image already. Hopefully some of the concepts that we explained take you a long way. One of these days, I want to get a crit from me, whenever you like. But again, changes, just some information over there. I thought that was helpful. A great piece, man. Really, really good job. Doing well. It's very, very late in the night. But we are in high spirits. Okay. That's it for the crits. Uh, do I have a timestamp for the stream anywhere? What's the current time? It is... It's something. Okay, one hour and ten minutes. I gotta remember that. For the YouTube video. Cool. One hour and ten minutes. Okay, today's... References for the studies are going to be this and this. Going to be painting some puppers and painting some clothes. And then I maybe, maybe we'll continue streaming and just finish up my uh, my commission. I'm sorry, my, what's it called? Portfolio work for the day. On stream, maybe. I might do that. But that means I'll be streaming for like six more hours. Which we could do, maybe, but I won't be talking as much. But that'll be fun. Okay. I'm going to quickly get up and get some water because my, <laughs> my bottle's empty. Come back. We're going to be doing this little puppy. And, uh... Little ducklings. Stay tuned and bear. Alrighty, we are back. How long do you want to spend on this one? Let's say an hour. Don't give ourselves too much time. A lot of elements, but I think we can do it in an hour, most likely. Okay, got the reference up and running. And do a quick crop of my canvas and then we can begin. See if there are any more pieces of information. Cool, we got through a bunch, bunch of those uh, those crits. That was good. A lot of fun as well. I like looking at you guys' work. Great job.
All right, guys. So one hour of work beginning in three. Yo, Giant Far, good to see you. I hope you're having a good day. We just have another drawing over here. You can join us if you'd like. Okay, let's put a slight little notion towards the background. I do want this background to be slightly cool. Like a lighter, cooler background. Why is because I want to have a good amount of color coordination, a color contrast with my uh, with my elements in the foreground, which is going to be my dog. Most of those are going to be kind of nice and dark warm. So a bit of contrast in that way. It's going to go a long way. I'll bring it to be a bit more warmer towards this particular area over here. Bring it nice and warm as we go closer to the foreground, this kind of idea. I don't want to match it perfectly. We bring a little bit of that cushion, a bit of that perspective in there. And that's it. That's all we have to care about for the background. I might choose to slightly lighten this in the future. Maybe we can do it right now. Again, I want to maintain that slight amount of coolness. I don't want this to be too cool because that'll create an unfortunate color contrast. But having this be moderately cool, that's okay. We can kind of manage that a little bit. A few strokes, keep the, the brush nice and large. A couple of strokes there, a couple of strokes here, and we should be good to go. Kind of idea. There we go. Alright, so let's quickly block out this little doggo. Because focus of so goddamn cute. Okay, let's get a nice little warm brush and then start making some marks. Okay, first thing is, place him on the canvas. So place him with one straight gesture line because he is sitting up nice and straight. And then let's kind of get his overall look. Let's say that is maybe something like a cube. Where? Right there. And then from there, we have a gesture of this. So keep it nice and far away from you. This kind of angle go in there. And this kind of right. All the way up to the bottom of his mouth. So we have an internal taper coming in there paper of the uh, inward inward that way and we have the bottom of the uh, jaw right there we'll just say that's the bottom of the jaw slight taper up for the mouth and then we have the, at the bottom of the jaw we just draw a line straight outwards that's a plumb line a horizontal plumb line it's this side of the ear right over there which gives us the side of the ear bring this down because that's almost vertical a little bit inwards of vertical bring that down over there and again, we kind of follow this line a bit there, a bit of a lazy, slanted gesture. This side, the shape over here. And now we can kind of form this roughly based on the negative shape. Just drawing with negatives, drawing with plums. Idea. It's constructing the drawing based on what we see. Here. And now we have a rough idea of where the head goes. Easy enough. We can continue on with this negative shape. I have simplified heavily over here. I might choose not to. Light, good to see you, man. How's it going? So it does go outward over there, but I'm choosing not to include that right now because, again, at this stage, I want to keep things nice and even. So there is a slight little invert taper that way for the line over here. So I'll just draw it really loosely. And same thing goes over here. These aren't per perfectly parallel. Well, these are kind of parallel. This one and this one. Right over there. Parallel right there. Easy enough. Not too bad. Nice rough. It is cute, isn't it? So Okay, so let's figure out locations over here. So we're gonna figure out the location of the nose. The nose is about not really halfway, is it? What's halfway over here? Halfway is about right there. Right? So halfway is right about there. So if we cut that little halfway mark into half, we get the bottom of the nose, which goes right over there. There is bottom of the nose. Let's say roughly maybe a bit lower than that. A bit lower so i'm trying to evaluate that overall shape right now let's get that internal angle face so this is over here the ruffles of the neck this internal line over here is the actual snoot i'm going to be able to draw that snoot because the snoot's so cute it's a snoot. get over there that's a little all right there let's taper in inwards towards the center that line's confusing isn't it i want to get rid of it at some point one and two We'll say the nose is a little bit lower than that. How about that? And we want to draw that rough little shape of the nose. So it goes straight over here. Go straight over here. Slightly tapered, but we'll just draw it straight because you know it's easier to draw straight, and we can always taper it later. It goes a little bit higher. It goes all the way back. We have this rough kind of triangular shape. This kind of notion. 
We evaluate that shape against the shape that it's based on. Lower the size of it slightly large. But again, I'm not going to try and shoot for perfection with every one of these measurements. We're just going to get into the ballpark. The notion is to get as quickly as possible into the painting phase. Now we have this beautiful triangle coming from up here. So we have to extend this little gesture over here. Break the gesture over here. That way. And these lovely triangles. Separate the head. These triangles are so important in drawing dogs, by the way. Draw these triangles as soon as possible, especially the one in the center. Give you a bunch of time to be measuring, because if you don't get that little spacing right, everything's going to look very goofy. So the line over here goes all the way up, it's a vertical gesture. We can use some plumb lines to place everything else. So this eye happens distinctly towards the left of this nose, if the nose is right here, the eye starts right over here, and it ends right over here. That starts with about this much negative shape. It's roughly over there. And we can kind of find the other eye based on that. You can draw that little quick shape. That's easy enough to measure. Draw the eye from there. And always, always think about the negative shape. Fine. You always think about it negatively with respect to the nose, maybe. Really, really quick measurements. What are we getting there? We can divide the nose at this point, divide it a bit asymmetrically, it doesn't divide it equally. This sort of idea. Or maybe increase the taper. Line right there. Taper. Bring this little shape here, maybe. Give more of a buff nose. That's for buffing right there. And we have this little internal shape that goes down. bottom of the jaw. Right over there. Some things maybe need to get a bit clearer right there, which is add a bit more information right there, make this little slowly correcting within my existing shapes. Everything reads just roughly where it needs to. Of idea, and we have a rough coordination on the shapes. Fireflies, good to see you, man. How's it going? We're doing a quick little painting here, it'll take us one hour. So, the ducks themselves they're roughly formed in this little area, they kind of occupy half and half. Dog's body right there, so half and half. We can just draw a quick little square. Figure out the overall length. So, this length looks a little bit more than the, the length of the entire head. We can quickly verify that with our pen if you'd like to. It seems to be ex almost exactly the same length, so that means the bottom of the ducks happens to be about right about there, maybe. Accurate? Seems mildly accurate. Then. Bottom of the dog, or bottom of the ducks, will be right over there, and we have the top of the ducks, which is going to be right over there. So we have the overall proportion of the ducks roughly already sorted out for. So again, the major theme behind all measurement is measure things against other things. So you have to use your entire your objects on your canvas is a metric for other objects, so things are proportioned relatively to each other. That's always the idea. So relative proportion. I can find maybe the center line of this duck by kind of just pulling this little line from the ear downwards. Right? So I have that little center line. Also, uh, you know, alternative to that, I can just kind of draw it based on the negative shape. There. This kind of idea. Get this head out of the way. Significantly larger, almost twice as large as this head on this side. Need to consider goes over here with this negative again just draw things nice and square be able to control what we're doing square all around beautiful beautiful lovely circular duck head this entire thing is almost like a like a teardrop shape right? overall thing let's draw that teardrop easy to draw those big shapes so it's easy to do that association. That's called shape association, by the way. If you ever study proportional measurement tools, that comes under the uh, little heading of shape association, which is you don't draw things as they are, but draw things like they look like. So it's almost like when you remember being a kid and looking at clouds, the cloud looks like a certain thing. Around it, it looks like a, like a dog, all these things. But ultimately, it's just a cloud, right? Same way that if you look at an object, you can 
think about it as a different object maybe you see it a bit clearer because we're all affected by our ability to distinguish things from what we know in terms of what they look like and what they actually look like always the same thing important for us to be able to distinguish things oftentimes what we think things look like as opposed to how they actually look like which is why shape association is so important okay get this little angle in here the dots are not going to be super important to get perfectly accurate so i will take liberties over here i do want them to read duck like though so some notion at least towards the beak is going to be taken i want to at least locate their eyes right over there maybe right over there it's going to be pretty important but these are going to be like under 50 strokes each one of these ducks hopefully if i'm doing my job right Yes. This goes cutting this little length into half, right about there. It goes parallel with this side, so I can get that beak from there. I probably go somewhere over there. No idea. So in 11 minutes, we have blocked out the entire drawing. Give or take. Now we know where our paint needs to go, which is the purpose of a block in. Remember, we're not trying to get line art here. We're not interested in line art because, again, this painting is not going to feature lines at the end of it. It's going to feature paint. So, in that respect, or it's going to be as utilitarian as possible in this particular particular point in your uh, in your painting. Go crazy with things. Detail where it doesn't need to go. Okay, that's our blocking. Let's start filling in some color, shall we? So, eleven minutes. We are about uh, one sixth of the way there. So the dog is going to be locally warm in color, except for these areas over here in the darkness. It's going to be probably a darkish purple, maybe, but beautiful, beautiful warmness coming down here. Do I want to give myself slight indications towards the shapes at the end of this little block in? Maybe I will, because I don't do it very often, so it might be good to do that. So what are the shapes that we need to really block out of the beginning? It's going to be this, right? This primary orange shape that defines the maw. Like that. Not in the, under control. Was right there just a bit of distinguishingness for my own convenience that little warmness is the maw gonna be a bit of warmness up here that's the eyes and maybe on the ducks a little bit of these shapes that i could probably do with selection tools that's fine okay let's quickly add some color to this the first thing that i want to do on this is just add a locally warm mask underneath all of these animals so we'll add a mask really quickly Nothing fancy, it's not really a mask in the traditional sense. It's just applying color underneath to separate out from the background because I want to start off of warm background or in the foreground over here. So I just generally select everything over there. And we'll do two things. We'll A, make it warmer, and B, we'll make it darker. Okay, that's my basis. And let's continue from here. So let's throw on some... We'll just start with the dog's color. So I'll do a couple of tests and then I'll just paint. Test number one, a bit too purple. Test number two, it's about where I want to go. A bit darker than that. Test number three, we'll stick with that value. So again, three tests very, very quickly. One, two, three, done. This is going to be my dark value to begin with. Remember that colors are going to be layers and layers and layers of paint. So ultimately, I don't really care too much about how perfect my first color is. I want it to be roughly in the area, particularly of value. I don't care too much about the temperature, but at least the value needs to be accurate. Get roughly in that area. I'm happy enough with it. Move on from there. I don't have to go crazy. Maybe it's too light is a big question. Maybe it's too light, right? It could be. I'm going to bother right now. You know, I can adjust it later on. Maybe I might even like it to be higher keyed, right? I'm leaving that option open. Again, get that same little value. I'm just going place by place, piece by piece. Just applying that same value that it shows. Because why am I doing this particularly? Because these colors are very, very similar. Similar enough that I'm just going to paint it the same. I can add little distinctions later on if I choose to. 
And the octagon stuff should be very trivial, so I'm perfectly fine. Some of these I'll just straight paint. It doesn't really matter if I straight paint or if I use flexion because I painted over heavily anyway. Here, I can darken it up around the um, chick over there. Bring in there. DT, good to see you, DT. How's it going? Okay. Any more areas we're missing? Maybe I'll push the dock a bit more. Right over there. Side of the head. It's gonna help me a lot to figure out where my proportions are going wrong because again, I don't trust my blocking at all. It does really speed up my process, but do I trust it? No, and nor should you if you're not confident in your blockings. Okay, make some simplifications in that dark value and wherever you can find it. It's gonna be really important, and this idea is gonna be. It'll save you more time, the better you are at finding out what similarity actually means in the canvas, right? I don't want to be painting this with a billion different colors. I want to paint this with a simple, simple structure. So sometimes I make simplifications later on, but maybe I didn't think about it initially. Most of the time you'll find that. They to one another quite straightforwardly. Like some questions could ask, like, why did I simplify over there? But I'm just trying it out. Kind of idea. There's nothing like particularly right or wrong about not simplifying that area. Okay. That's our first color done in Dustin. Second color. Again, a similar dark value, but this one goes a bit browner, a bit redder. Purplish. That goes on the nose. Goes in the gap. Maybe we'll go a bit darker on that one. Goes in the gap right there. Slightly stronger version of it. Go up top. Real quick, doesn't take me too much time. Also gonna go over here between the chicks because there's a big dark shape in between. Why not just use the same darkness, right? The reason why we shouldn't. Yeah, put more yellow into that darkness so I can use the same value up here maybe. Quick, quick little application right there. Throw some saturation on there, maybe. Go over it one more time. This kind of idea. Okay, so now let's apply that little coolish color in the mid tone. That goes, let's just say that goes maybe not as blue, but a bit more towards the purple. How does that look? More desaturated, a bit more blue. Again, like I said, I'm not going to try this more than three times. After, after time number three, I'm, I'm fairly certain I'm close enough that I'm happy enough applying it. So I just want to cool up these areas in between, first and foremost, before I make any changes. Because I want some cool bleed through happening in there. And once I'm done with that, then I'm going to choose a bit more of a darker gray color and go over certain areas. This, for example. Don't ever underestimate the power of greys on animals, by the way. Super, super powerful is what they are. Greys are really, really far, far distance on animals. Applying some of those greys. Over here. Bring out a little bit of that warmness in there. And I'm fine with bleed through. Because again, it's going to bleed through to warm, which is what I want. That blue on the canvas right there. Fill up those ears for a second. I have that bleed through, and then I can go back in there with the gray. Nice. Okay, let's get that beautiful, beautiful saturated warm orange. My first test, desaturated a little bit. Second test. That seems okay, right? Do we want to change that any? Maybe add a bit more red to it, maybe. That's fine. Nice and systematic. Get that orange on the canvas. Get this brown on top, pushing downwards over there. Get that blue over here and push 
to where it needs to go. These areas, it's a placeholder. It's eventually going to become a highlight somewhere on my canvas, but right now I can just remain where it is. 20 minutes into the paint. Nice and deliberate. Under control. Nice and orange. Think about the form in just a second. Be a bit more careful of my strokes over here, considering I keep painting over my line. Okay. And we can start reusing certain valleys in certain areas. Ending. Okay, get in there. Okay, get this little darkness over here to one's here. Little curvature. That side. All right, cool. That's our almost our base coat done for the dog, and then we can start putting in some fancy, fancy things. But again, we not we need enough paint over there to begin with. And after that, we can go crazy. Maybe slightly obey our shapes here. We did take the time to, to draw them out, so we can slightly obey them right now. And of course, those eyes will go deeply, deeply, deeply into the uh, beautiful dark warm. And even have to burn this in at some point. We have a bunch of dark on there. Okay, let me quickly get the lighter values on this nose figured out. And the brush goes a bit smaller. And get the darknesses nostril that as well. Beautiful dark value. It is the same darkness in the nostril. Lightly get a little drop shadow in the eye. At this point, I want to slightly increase the darknesses in some of my shadows. I'll do that as my last thing, and I want to go to the chicks real quick, because I don't want to neglect them. But uh, I want to add a bit more darkness, maybe a, a spell more coolness to these darks. We can add. A couple of hints of the darkness. Of course, I want a lovely, lovely dark warm in there as well. I mean, as a reference, I thought those ducks were burly and peck muscles the dog. That would be a great thing to draw, though. That'd be such a fun painting. Okay. Alright. Get in there. Okay, now we have to pick maybe a two or three values in the duck. The first value we'll pick is that light, because it's to get that light done and dusted first and foremost. So, the first attempt at the light is this color. Seems appropriate. We'll slightly cut the saturation. Okay, let's apply that really quickly. Remember, this these ducks are going to be super, super generally stroked. You don't have to be too perfect with them. First stroke right there. Second color is going to be a bit more reddish, a bit more darker. First attempt. Second attempt, I like that a bit more. We'll desaturate that. That's third attempt. That seems good with that. And keep things nicely under control. And put it where it needs to go. I don't really care if I paint over anything. I don't care if I'm losing out on that detail, because again, detail can be added later on. Something for that initial read, right? Get get paint on it as soon as possible. We can go and hang out with you. What makes you think that she wants to hang out with you? Jesus. Awfully presumptuous of you. The yellow in there. I'm going to stain this with a bit of uh, saturated yellow as well, in the burn brush. 
Why must you be a bitch all the time, James? Not everybody. Get a yellow here. Cool. Everything is coming together quite nicely. Okay, we haven't even come in texture and they're all doing so well. Okay, 25 minutes with the painting. Bring some lightness in here, some lightness and some warmness to the texture of the foreground here. If you want a greater read against the background, all we have to do is go back here, maybe slightly increase the blue or something. Increase the overall read like that. Imagine a stream where James is 110% sincere, sincere the entire time. That's every stream. I'm always sincere, Elena. I mean everything I say ever. <laughs> cool. Okay. Get the lines off. Everything is cohesive enough. That's a painting without lines. Looking good, right? I still have a couple of markers to put in, but it's, it's doing fine so far. Let's put in those markers though. Okay, so there's some specifics in here that I can kind of cut out with existing values. There's some specifics like there's a little bit of darkness going through the eye. I don't want to paint that with too much attention to detail, but something would be nice, right? Just something right there. Almost on a Danish or over there, but something might be nice, right? Paint in the chat. See how badly I did. Okay. Going okay so far. Uh, am I missing anything? I got that yellow in there. Yellow could be a little bit lighter. Sarcastic dick whistle. Jesus. I love seeing these studies on Instagram. I'm glad I can finally tune into watching one live. I'm glad you can too. Always, always fun doing them. Light over here. There's light over here. So much sampling, you see? There's so much sampling going on from my uh, my canvas onto other portions of my Because you don't want to be stuck. This applies for all types of art, not just uh, studies, but you don't want to be always going to your color selector to pick more colors. Sometimes it can be much more beneficial. I'm going to pick the same blue of his highlights onto their beaks for more color coordination. But that's exactly what I'm talking about. Like The less time you spend over there in the color selector, the more time you can spend painting. The same thing applies for traditional, right? The less time you spend mixing, the more time you can paint. Realize that you don't really need all that much. See, this is a warmer color right there. I'm going to straightly take this color over here, you know? Color off of the dog's mouth. I'll slightly change it to be brighter. I'll bring it in here. These kind of things. It's so important to try and do this as much as possible because it gives you so much time. Now, it doesn't save me any time because I have to sit here and talk about it while I'm doing it. So, wait, I waste time that way. But it'll save you guys time because you know how to talk to a stream. Okay. Continuing on. So now we have these ideas all over the canvas, right? We have all these notions of what's supposed to go there. I'll pick that blue from his chest and I'll put it on the uh, on the eyes so I know where they are. Do forgive me though, these chicks are going to look demonic for a little bit with these big black shark eyes. When I was younger and much more stupid, I used to play around with airsoft guns. And I once, my brother was lying down reading a Star Wars book or something. And I was like, hey, watch this. And I shot a, a BB right into the air. It went all the way up. It bounced off a fan. It went all the way down and hit him right in his forehead. And then he did that slow, that slow get up. You know, you know when your sibling, if you have older old siblings, they do the slow get up where they get up really deliberately. And I saw his eyes in that moment looked like a shark's eyes, just black and glossed over because he was just seeing blood at that point and then he beat my ass. Bring up with a trip. Plus keeping the colors throughout the composition can make it so strong. Yeah, you want that simplicity, right? So, like I said, I want to update some of this darkness. I'm going to slightly update it, as promised. Of course, at this point, now that we have a vision of the entire drawing, we know things are slightly cohesive, we can start getting bolder with our decisions, because now things are working, man. We're in this brave new world of things actually broken. Broken? Working. And things actually broken. And then Indian 
Resurrected, yeah. I was Indian the brown, but now I'm Indian the white. <laughs> I see that. The legal. Darkness over here. Cool. Can I get rid of this now? Oh, Jesus, not that. This. Look at that painting. Alright. <laughs> Look at that thing. Not even done. Get some bits of information here. So I don't want to just line things out completely, because again, putting a line, putting a line on it is just a, it's just a joke, so don't do that. You don't spend all your time kind of distinguishing things with form and value, and then you just put a line on your painting. You don't want to do that. But at the same time, you always, always want to have a bit of a control over where your form's actually going, right? That's actually the reason that you silhouette things out before you draw things from imagination. But people recommend doing um, silhouettes and, and also thumbnails, because you don't want to just draw from nothing, because you need to have a good understanding of what, what everything is and where it goes. Important. Word for it. Look at his little smile, he's so cute, my goodness. Even are you, he's so cute. A little sub subtle, or as I used to say, subtle. There's a subtle little orange right there. I want to put it in right now. I could put a little bit of a mark on it. They're all demons? It's because they don't have a soul right now. I have, I have yet to give them a soul. Okay, make an overall gander. Overall gander reveals. Is your gray value needs to go darker? Push him darker. A French Ellie, wooden speaker. Did you? Darkness over here. Oh. Get that overall read once more. When I say overall read, what do I mean? I mean I'm just going all the way back to my canvas and I'm just blurring my eyes. That's what it means. Blurring them eyes. Good strong read. Would you say was it, was it rude? Of course not. Me rude. <laughs> Talking about who you think you're speaking to? Nothing but civil. A oh, fault, actually. More mean to people. No one does Aiden know about this. I'm. God bless. Bring some more darkness in here. Shaping things, because now that I don't have any lines on there, I can just use a background to add more information. Certain portions of the canvas. I can also do fancy things like this, right? Bring in more contrast if I want to in certain areas. What are fancy things we can do here? I'm painting the painting as a whole. You're the worst. <laughs> How your streams been, by the way, Ali? You've been having fun? Darkness in there. Cool. Oh, look at the little popper. He's so cute. Okay, at this point, we can start putting in a little bit more texture into the drawing, shall we? Add in a little fur transitions in certain areas. And while I do so, I'll also be adjusting the value. That's where I put my texture in. So when I'm adjusting value towards the end of certain areas, I will indeed go a little bit into the texture side of it. So this brush, when I'm adjusting the blue value over there, also adding a little bit of um, texture. They've been good, but someone never shows up. Let's go to stream at weird times. Not my fault. Streams are more EU friendly, I'd attend more. So if you were more EU friendly, I would attend more. In areas like this. We can add in a little bit more texture. There, everyone, leave the eyeballs up. Hmm, tempting a little bit. Very tempting. A little bit of information right there. You stream while I'm at work? Why'd you work at that time then? 
you're a better friend, you wouldn't. You would just quickly jump. That was right there. Evaluate overall colors. We want to darken this up a little bit. <laughs> okay. There's a soft little transition right there. I can push this to more of a purple if I like. Okay, get this thing sorted. I think that could be done a little bit better. I do want to push that to darkness though. But the airbrush comes in so handy. You just make mild little saturation adjustments to your canvas. That disrupt disrupting the brushwork, and that's why I love the airbrush. I'm just making very mild corrections. But since the airbrush lacks an edge of its own, I kind of go a little bit buck wild with this for a little for just a little bit of time. Of course, eventually you have to stop. You can go crazy with it because doing the overall texture of your drawing, but it is quite good for that particular reason. Nice, strong, warm shadow. Like this. Stream during EU times, you're not there. You're gonna get so much shit. Stream during the day on Saturday. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm not here on Saturday. Do something else. Saturday? Nah, nah. I'm sick that day. Not bad. Get this orange in here. And of course, let's get a little bit of teeny tiny highlight. Throughout this entire painting, I'm working really far away from the canvas. Oh, 10 anime betrayals. How's it going, KPA? Yeah, buddy. They've been treating you. They're working really, really far away from the canvas. It's totally by design, by the way. We really want to be doing this whenever we paint. I get that overall read of the painting. It doesn't matter if you miss out on some details. I get that overall read. It all is for shame. Why are we friends? When did this happen? We're friends. I was not informed of this. Bring some darkness in here. And carry that same darkness all the way throughout the side. Guess you learn something new every day, man. Some darkness here. You want a light on the side? What a cutie. We've been friends for over a year. You're not even old enough to be my friend. What are you talking about? Like, that means we've been friends for like half your life. Darkness in here? <laughs> Shut up, Elena. It's weird. Here. Can sample that same. <laughs> I feel like I've been saying to get some darkness in here like 50 times to study. But it's true, we're just trying to manage the darkness here. 38 minutes into this drawing. I'm older than you? No, you're not. You just grow slower. Okay, we have a nice little beautiful blue on here. The blue is most likely a grey, because it's not as blue enough for me to call it just a straight up blue. Bit like that. This is the grey we're applying on the canvas. Seems to suit our purposes. Fun enough. Then they were up here. Do an initial test of this highlight value. That's like a it's gray, but not blue enough. So how about that? Is that okay? Like maybe a little bit lighter, and I'll put it in here with how about this brush? That's a cool looking brush. With 
to slightly up that highlight in certain regions. About right over there. Gotta make sure it's not too textury now, otherwise it breaks the overall read. Are you mixing me up with an infant? Because I'm pretty sure I'm 26 unless I magically age changed. Am I mixing it up with an infant? I'm sure that happens often enough though. The darkness in here. All I'm saying. If you're not one, then why do you dress like one? That is a baby. <laughs> Twenty six, a baby age. My goodness. Hope so. I'm turning twenty six next year. You never seen how I dress? Yeah, but I can imagine what it looks like. I'm a concept artist, right? So I can concept it. Look at that nose, though. It's a cool nose. Okay. Get rid of this darkness. There's a lot of darkness here, so I've got to get rid of it. Nice little neutral place to start out with for the eye. I was being nice today. I was being calm and polite. And that was your mistake. Look at that beautiful line here. Look at how, how handsome this puppy is. I love him. He is just the best. And here to the side. I'm slightly turning down my darknesses while I work. And also a great opportunity for me to add texture. Back to luck as I figure out this bullshit of <laughs> If you need help, Diffy, let me know. You can show off your work and people will wonder why am I it's just too quitting this girl's art when she's way better than him. Get that free exposure, don't worry about it. Then you pull this shit? I don't know what you're talking about, Ellie. I've been nothing but kind. Honest. Actually, I just think that you. Check yourself. Add a bit of blue there to the transition. See, again, we're building up colors on the, on the camera. Building it up. Up and up and up, and it eventually just explodes everywhere. <laughs> Terrible analogy. Move it around the eye socket. Now those eyes are ready to be put in. Put his eyes in like a doll's eyes. Okay, so now we have to ask ourselves some questions. Where forth do we get those valleys for the eyes? I'll pick an orange over here. I'll darken it up. Orange from the um, mouth. Darken enough for my first pass. There's gonna be some orange reflected over there. It's gonna have deep orange eyes. Second thing I'll do is I'm gonna burn this value in because I want it to be dark, but I also want it to be saturated. Burn in there. One question, do we do we want eyes? Do we want eyes? I want eyes. Because they look so pretty. Oh, how they look on this paint. Okay. After that, I'm gonna glaze over it with a bit of this lighter value here. That. The room reflection on the eyeball. There. I'm gonna throw in a soft iris. Who will sacrifice their eyes? Where are going? We don't need eyes to see. What movie is that from? The yeah, I played it the first person I guess. Darkness in there. I can bring in back a little bit of that light now. The saturation in there. Eyes are so fun to paint. So many things you can do with them. I think at that point where I was just, I just wanted, I don't. I'm at that point where I just wanted, don't. I'm slacking on stuff. 
I want it done. Probably what you're saying. I get what you're saying. At the point where you want it done, but you're just lacking. I get that. No, you're gonna do it, man. You don't, you don't need my help. You don't need anybody's help because you know what? You're all the help that you need. Go out there and show them what you're made of. Okay, throw in highlight. A little bit too powerful, don't you think? It's a little bit too powerful that highlight. Let's put that in with a more textured brush. That that uh, that square brush is just way too much power. We can't handle it right now. It's too much energy. More energy. Put more blue on this side, maybe. Not a wild boy, Tom. I'm gonna be releasing my diss track on Tom pretty soon. I'm gonna take him to the cleaners. Practice the neat. Okay, raise the overall light, the eye. Bit of a reflected. Don't want to cloud it up though. Try to get that beautiful darkness underneath. A bit too harshly, I think. I'm gonna slightly cut it down. No, I don't want to light up. Cool. Okay, so I'm going to make a slight little correction there with the overall position of the eyes. So I want to bring in some lights down there. This sort of bring it there and bring this out. That makes more sense. I can bring back the highlight in there. Just so I have that, that nice little interaction of dark versus light. How that makes sense. Add a little bit of these little things right there. Whiskers from Ellie. Some whiskers on here. Usually I just break up the uh, positioning of certain values on here. So I'll just pick a blue or something. Just draw it out. I don't pick a different value entirely for the, for the uh, whiskers ever. It seems to be sufficient to just maybe pull some values outward. Does a job. So it's all, all we have to do is just break up that little reed out. Darker value over here. Maybe a lighter value for the rim of the mouth. And let me just get have a harder fur brush. It's not really a fur brush, but it's a rake. It's a hard rake. Over certain areas. Get a bit more oomph. Push it to more yellow as well. Get more oomph in certain areas. The animals are so fun. 49 minutes. I don't have to be perfect here, just have to add a light, sensible manner. 
Head over there. Out over here. Rock Valley over here on top of this little chick. Make sure this Dark Valley is doing what it needs to do, which is silhouette against the face. That. Use that lovely deep red value right underneath the jaw. Super, super saturated. Looking absolutely adorable. I love them. So, finishing stuff would be just to add in a little bit more texture towards these transitions because I drew them with a, with a square brush, believe it or not. These are all squares. Most of this drawing is done in square. But since time is of the issue, do a little bit more focus on these little chicks. So this is going to be done with a lot of texture. A lot of this is going to be done on the heads over here. We'll choose to do this with a bit more of a harsher, sharper brush right over there. Get a bit more appropriate value in there. Nice dark, rich, deep red value, reddish brown. I'll do this top, these tops with a bit of a sharper brush. I want to direct more attention to the tops of their heads. Easier to direct attention if you have a much more sharper brush. These little notions like that. Little sharp little brush marks. What they're going to be doing. They're going to be saying, hey, look at me. I'm the head. I'm something important. Please look at me. These kinds of ideas. Now, of course, there's more than that color. See that desaturated gray almost on top of there? Bring that gray into the picture. Again, with the notion of texture, I bring a little bit of that gray. It turns out to be a decent warm. I kind of put a little bit of the color there because the texture brush won't fill in, fill in, fill in enough gaps on its own. Not took a while to say. I'm going to fill too many gaps on its own. So I've got a little bit of that information. I'm not going to push the white as hard as in the reference because I want people to look at the dog first. I'm somewhat controlling my values when I do this. Put more information right there. in here and of course at this point I can kind of go crazy kind of meld things in together as well I'll complete the image at this point I'm barely ever going to my color selector everything is really coming from my canvas getting everything that I need from over here Right now, I've added way, I added far, like far too many colors already. Maybe not far too many. I think I've added enough colors. Even in notion like this, I don't want to clearly just draw that foot, so I'll abstract it like that with a couple of strokes. So one and then two, maybe. Done. Good thing over here. Get the value to be as correct as we can, so it's one and two, and that's done. Keeping it nice and simple, because the more information I put there, the more the viewers are going to want to look there. That's something that we need to control. Down here, this edge is going to be handled mainly by a softer brush. Again, I want attention to be drawn to this. Even though it's going to sharpen the reference, I do want to control it in my painting. Of course, I can add in additional layers of animation here. A bit of mixing. I'm going to cut this in with a bit of a lighter value. I'm not quite sure how I love my, my um, pen is, but I'm surely I'm just moving it around like a crazy person right now. But I have been playing around with my level 50. Um, they're fuzzball, fuzzballs now. Yeah, they're kind of fuzzballs now. A little bit. Get in there. Four minutes. Gonna cut into this shape over here. Get a nice amount of that sharpness. Same thing over here. Oh, I added my softness in, in regions over here. So some regions are soft and hard. Other regions are just hard. So the heads are just hard. 
These regions on the on the outside are soft and hard. And that's done. Kelly. By volition, right? Because you want that breed to be there. Your mic is cutting out a bit of the enemy word synthesis. Yeah, I did change it, you're right. And I can't really speak that aloud either, so I will change it after the study maybe. But you're totally right. Get that same darkness from the eyes. Bring it down here. Reuse, 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 reuse. The boy over here is a bit too dark, don't you think? We'll solve you. A bit of yellow. Yeah, maybe a couple of notes over here. I'm gonna add a bit of detail in here with the gray, because again, if I add an orange there, color coordination will be a bit too hard. Color contrast rather will be a bit too hard. So I'll be careful about that. Crazy. Of course, some of these harder edges need to be resolved. Let's do that with this brush. There's a bit of an occlusion down here that I should have solved earlier in the painting. It's going to take me some extra steps to solve this right now, or I could do a bit of a trick here. The trick is like this. So I'll just select around this area, right? And I'll just apply a bunch of texture or whatever to fill out that area like this. I'll hit Control shift i I'll invert my selection. I'll select an airbrush, right? Any old airbrush, any brush will do actually. The airbrush is just softer. And what I'll do, I'll just select an ambient occlusion value, paint around it like that. So I get a little bit of that shadow around something. And then all I have to do is just grab a texture brush or whatever, paint over a little bit. And now I have the shadow. A bit too distinct, don't you think? That's one way of doing it. I kind of regret I regret my decision right now because it's too harsh. But um, one way of doing it. A bit too distinct, aren't you, laddie? I don't want you. I don't want you to draw too much attention. Okay, go a little bit lighter. Seven. But I will adjust those mic settings. A bit of a redder value over here. I'm gonna cut the beak out from these little values. Marvin. Shut up, you dirty hoe. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Thanks, Marvin. Appreciate you, buddy. Oh my boy. My boy, Marvin. <laughs> Did you say shut up, you dirty hoe? Oh, you're doing well, man. Done. Late night studies. Stream, hopefully. I don't know if anybody's doing this with me, but... Usually do. Let's put in... Some quick little highlights here. Oh, that's gonna tend towards blue. Gotta cut the demoliness out of these little cheapy cheapies. There. There. Don't be too strong with these highlights, by the way. We don't want to draw too much attention. And one right there. Value is appropriate. 59 minutes is the last minute of drawing. Values around the eyes. Everything in order.
There we go. That's our painting. It's a fun one, right? For an hour? Pretty good. <sighs> that was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed that. Really, really cool study. No problem right there. I know, right? She's just... Okay. That's my piece. Cute I should have seen today. <laughs> That's my painting, guys. Hopefully you like it. Nice cat and sheep. I know, I'm just a, I'm a cat and sheep expert. Look at this fucking duck, man. This fucking three minute duck or whatever. <laughs> it's a pretty good duck. Okay. Let's put our name on this. If you guys want to copy my signature, this is how you do it. No, right? Incredible. Okay. Fun. Let's put this in the Discord. Ah. Did I fucking love dogs. Dogs and ducks. <laughs> I almost combined them. I said dogs. I fucking love dogs. It's a good painting. You guys did this long with me, by the way. I don't expect anybody did because I don't stream at this point. But uh, yeah, if you do this at any point, put it on the Discord so we can review. I slightly adjust. I call dibs on the leftmost one. <laughs> are, we are we choosing uh, ducklings now? I'm gonna slightly increase the cropping over here. I'm gonna get rid of my signature, but who cares? Thanks for a better painting. He's just like, hey, look at me. Beautiful. A lot of work done. A lot of work done. Our great. Maybe I should have said 45 minutes to see how much I got done then. If we get even more work done. Funny how that works. Yeah, that was a lot of fun though. Up on the Discord. <laughs> Moist. I was working on the crit, James. You're still working on the crit? My oh, goodness, what are you doing to it? Alright, this is number two. This is going to be a bit looser. Probably in uh, 45 or 30. And then for this one, let's take a drink of water. Do a quick little stretch. And maybe I can fix the noise getting on my, my microphone. And then we can do study number two. Time. I'm gonna grab this uh, this post that we just made. I have to delete the layer. This is the only one you're doing? No, I'm gonna be doing this one and probably also work on portfolio right after, so I'll be streaming for a while most likely. A lot of fun. Okay. Number two. Risp, how's it going, Beastie? Good to see you, buddy. Follow the Epic Beast, follow Morbid Chaos. Morbid Chaos, we just finished this one in an hour. Little uh, duckling and puppy study. That was a fun one. Good little uh, introduction to its edges, its colors. Fun. Yeah, I'm doing alright, Beastie. Late at night, but getting work done. All I care about. So we can either do this thing, or we can do a few fashion studies. <laughs> but I've already done my fashion studies. Do you guys want to see some portfolio stuff? So the last time I showed you my silhouettes, right? My silhouettes. Characters. That's one of my characters, right? Another character right there.
If I can find it, Jesus. Bail? Bail in here? I didn't see her. Oh, hey, Bail. How's it going? Good to see you. Dude, I love that dragon. You did such an incredible job on that. I was working while you were making it. I saw that guy giving you advice on uh, on dust and stuff. I'm usually in your stream for uh, for streaming your process. I want to go back and look at that sometime. A great, great job. Follow Bail. Incredible artist. So from there, we have started doing character sketches. So I turned few of these into these. Character sketches of uh, this character. I have some for my other character as well, my non-character right there. The sketch draft for that. And here are the sketches for that. I'm doing a lot of work. Sketches of characters. You guys are amazing picking me up. I'm slogging through. Slogging though and overly redesign. Don't worry about it. You're you're clean. Doing a good job. Keep it going. I'll root it for you. Anything else that's worth showing? Uh, I can show you some vehicle silhouettes, I guess, if you want to see some vehicle designs. Here's some uh, some beasties. Beastie designs for vehicles. These are very simple because it's not much you can do about it. Because these are all need to be done in like three minutes tops. These are some under three minutes. So today, actually, after uh, I'm done with the second study, I need to do one more sketch for this character and do a bunch of sketches for this character over here, and also probably silhouetting. So I don't know if I'm, I don't honestly know if I want to do it on stream, but it'll be good to do it regardless on stream, off stream, because I need to get it done. My submission for my portfolio is on October the 1st, so a lot, of, a lot of work to be done. But I've been doing just a shit ton of work, so I'll get it done. Or maybe I can detail the author today. That would be fun to do. Also a little bit more brainless. Here's some authors if you guys don't know what those are. Where are you submitting it to? This first one is going to Art Center. Art Center Pasadena. Because if I get into one of their courses, I'm basically set. Because I'll get all of my uh, required contacts and recommendations and whatever, whatever from us. If you get into Art Center, it's a good fucking thing. One of the best in the world. Your boy Craig Mullins, your boy Anthony Jones, you know, Cynics, NDJ, all of them. Sound went dead, and I thought it was paused. Sound went dead. That shouldn't happen. Hold on, let me just figure, fiddle with my uh, my noise gate for a second. Uh, I don't know if this helps. That might be a bit too much. <laughs> Is that okay? That's 17. Uh, I think this should be okay, most likely. Okay. Uh, what's this course you're talking about? I'm gonna take... Um, Creative design course and art center if I get in. And if not, there's always brainstorm, it's always saying Feng Zhu or something, right? But uh but yeah, hopefully I get in. You sound okay to me? Good. I think you will easily get in. I don't know about easily, man. The the bar for art center is fucking ridiculous. Like let me show you some <laughs> let me show you some competition. Like this girl. This is Angela Chen. Like here's her silhouettes combined with uh, compared to my initial silhouettes, right? Because I need to add a bunch of detail to mine, but they're not really as comparable, right? But they'll get there with more work. So this is my initial pass, so I spent about 35 minutes on these. I'm sure she spent days and hours on these, so 
It'll be okay. I'll get them comparable. And if I can do if I can do that, then it's gonna be fine. And thankfully, I have such a solid basis for drawing and painting from my uh, from my year of studies. So I'm I'm quite confident I can do it. What I really want to do is get a scholarship because my fucking god, do I not have the money to pay for uh, for art center? It's really expensive. So yeah, a bit of added pressure, but I'll I'll, I'll manage it. Should be okay. All right, let's get rid of that on the, on the screen. There's a bit of a insight into the work that I've been doing. I'll put this little these few boys over here because it looks so cute. Also, I have pasta. I have pasta on my um on my stovetop, which I'm really excited about. So I might have to jump up and uh, heat it up at some point. But I made it this morning. Cannot wait to get into that. All right. So this is going to be... Do I do this in gesture or do I do this in straight? I might do this in gesture. Also, I recommend that if you guys want to do silhouettes or do character sketches, study those fashion posts I made on the, uh, the Discord. They're really, really good. Great references to study off of. Also, you can participate in, I think, I think Slowburn and, um, and Asher. That's Amy. I think they do something similar every uh, every week, maybe, every now and again. I'm not entirely certain. They, I'm usually asleep when they stream, but uh, you can go check them out as well. I do think that studying uh, fashion and gesture and all this stuff is a good idea. All right, shall we do the study then? We'll keep the timer at, let's just say 45 on this one. I'm behind on my fashion illustrations. Gotta get on it, Atlanta. But to be fair, you're probably ahead of most people. Okay, reset the timer, 3, 2, 1, let's go. First thing that I will do is let's just neutralize this canvas, right? Let's add a gray on it, just add a random gray. And we'll throw on a quick little gradient. Most things that you use, most tools that you use have a gradient tool somewhere on there. So I'm going to add a quick little gradient on this side. And maybe a quick reverse gradient on that side, maybe. It's a bit too much, don't you think? A little bit too harsh, governor. Quick little reverse gradient right there. And then also on this side, just to kind of separate out the floor and the ceiling. I'll add a bit, a bit of a square right there. I can just use an airbrush and brush that in to get a bit more of uh, information right there. One, two. This is what I do for my Geshe drawings, by the way, to get a quick little background set in. I just have to hit Control Shift I. I invert everything. I can add some darkness over here. And voila, you have a quick little scene already set up for you. Okay, now I can get the uh, line art there. Not line art, but block in. So really quickly. So we can do this by, by a few ways, right? We can do this by gesture, or we can do this by uh, uh, construction. I'll, I'm gonna do it by gesture, so which means my proportion is not gonna be exactly correct, but my energy is gonna be there. So right there. I get this kind of Y from it. So Y with the cloth right there, goes that way, goes that way, and goes that way. All right. So get the gesture of the body now. So the body goes how? It goes like that, right? It goes forward, it goes curved like that, and it goes straight like that. It's kind of idea. Okay, and now we can base everything off of this. So uh, how much construction do I really want to do here? This is a good question to ask. Not quite sure. My secondary just line is going to be like this. I'm going to go up. I'm going, I'm going to attach to the shoulder right there. My head's going to be right there. It's kind of an idea. So I don't have to really draw too much on top of this in terms of like actually drawing the body or whatever. So I can just uh, get away with. Oh Jesus! Listerick, welcome, man. Good to see you. Let me pause the timer for you real quick. It's good to see you. Cookie raid. Oh, Look at you guys, you're adorable. Team A95. Good to see. You. I'm 94, so I'm a year older than you. How's it going, Ten? It's good to see you. Aw, oh, did you bring your friends over here? Good to see you guys. I just painted this one. This little painting in an R. I think R in 28 seconds was this little painting. And uh, I'm a study streamer, so I teach and try to learn from people on Twitch. That's my little shtick over here. I can show you my Instagram real quickly. Give a bit of a breakdown on the work that we've done in the months preceding this. We do a lot of work here, and some of it gets posted. Most of these are under an R. 
45 minutes to an hour. Everything looks great. Thank you. I do appreciate that. Paula, ahoy. How's it going, man? Hate society. Me too. Good to see you. I forced Liz into draining you. I do appreciate that, guys. Thank you for the raid. So all of these are done on stream. If you guys are interested in getting better at painting oh, in general, I can't believe you've done this. I'll try to make sure this is a good place to do that. And thank you for informing your friend about the stream and uh, getting them to raid me. I do appreciate that, Tense. Very, very kind oh, of you. Fuck. I can't believe you've done this. So we're in the middle of doing the second study. This was our first study of the day. The second one is on clothing. The first one was going to be our walls on animals. And of course, I have some work for my portfolio if you'd like to see some uh, some creative design stuff. So I've been working into uh, trying to get into a very, very fancy art school. So hopefully things pan out. But if not, ah, well, it's a good experience. And I'll always have my engineering degrees. But thanks, guys. I appreciate you guys. If you want to post anything off your socials, Lynn, uh, you go ahead and do so. You have a complete full rights to do whatever you wish in the channel. I do, do appreciate that, uh, that generous support. And thank you. Very, very kind of you. All right, let's continue. Two minutes into a 45 minute study. We're just blocking things out very gesturally, not caring too much about that overall proportion. But now that we have a general gesture of things, we can start building up some blocks on the painting and kind of get where things need to go in general. Ah, a fucking new NBC. Get this way. This little line over there is about maybe, it's not halfway, maybe it's about like a third, between halfway and a third, right over there perhaps. So draw things in nice, lovely square shapes so we can evaluate them a bit easier to get things like that. Really, really harsh and simple. I'm sure they'll take you, James. If you don't, they are rubbish people. <laughs> I'll personally beat them up with old biscuits. I'm not sure. I mean, they're very, very high level people. Well, let's see. I think I'm good enough. Well, at least I will be by the time that I submit. But it's going to go okay. In the meantime, you guys will probably see me study on stream, hopefully. Maybe not as often as usual, but you'll see me here whenever I can. All right. Going down here. Draw a straight line. There's a bit of a coordination there. Do you see it? That straight line that goes all the way through here. Let's just put that line in there because it's going to be easier for us to figure out. Now we have that overall distance of the waist and we can use that to kind of figure out where you want to go let's put in that uh that posterior right there with a bit of that plumb lining so the uh edge over here is slightly outside this so what i'm doing is i'm drawing a line in my brain that's called a plumb line right a big vertical line so i draw that same plumb line right over there in my head and i say okay well this line over here needs to be outside that plumb line that's how I maintain coordination in terms of my overall size. If you ever have a problem in your painting, or you tend to island certain ideas, when you tend to draw certain things with good accuracy, but comparatively to everything else, it looks bad. So your eyes are correctly sized with respect to each other, but your nose is way too big. Then that ever, if that's ever the problem, then you need to put more plumb lines into your drawings. That'll really resolve that problem. I'll put this line in tentatively. I don't really know if this line's correct, but I need some edge to draw this angle from. So I'll just draw it like that. And see that converging angle right there? Converges right over there. It's gonna eat in the nose side. Sure, I will eat right after this. Get that little knee right there. And we have a bunch of little lines. So we can bother about the details later. We don't care about the details right now. We start really, really simply. We just push things nice and simple. Just like that. Again, evaluate angles with respect to each other. In fact, anything on a canvas, no matter what you're doing, Always consider the way that it looks with respect to everything else in the canvas. Don't draw things in isolation. If you are, it's a mistake. Draw things in how they relate to everything else in the canvas. And that will usually yield a very, very stronger, it's not just a stronger piece, but it's going to make things a lot quicker for you to do. Because you can't objectively say with any amount of certainty, especially as a beginner, you can't really say this value is correct, this shape is correct, this angle is correct, this color is correct. It's difficult. It's a hard thing to say. So rather than say something like that, we can say, okay, well, let me compare certain things. What about this angle with respect to this angle? And we're able to make these objectively true statements for our piece, and then basically not just have the piece coordinate with the reference, but coordinate with itself. And that's really the goal of all of these uh, all of these pieces. Dot, how's it going, dude? Speaking of study streamers, good to see you. Haven't seen you, uh, seen you on lately. Is it just me being a, a terrible friend, or is it you not streaming? get this little negative shape right there with the hand so god bless us doing hand studies by the way i've been using all that information in my 
portfolio work. But good to see you don't. I streamed this afternoon. Welp, I guess I'm a terrible friend. Sorry. But good to see you, man. So you're <laughs> I know I just said that. A bit more volume there towards the bottom. We're getting there, right? So now that I have my essential basis, I'm gonna cut the saturation on this. Or cut the uh, the strength of that. Make a quick little new layer here, and now I'll add in some of the folds, right? Since we are blocking this in in a much more traditional manner, let's block in some of these folds. So again, what I look for is parallel coordination, especially with fabric, right? Because things tend to be a lot more parallel, because these are all just forms in 3D, right? So we need to note these forms correctly in 3D, so we, I tend to focus a bit more on the drawing in this phase, a bit more on the blocking in in this phase, because if we're blocking everything in, my value is just going to solve a lot of the problems for me. I'll go to bed. It was nice to see you for a moment. Dude, thanks, Tens. And of course, um, I'm, I'll make the VOD available if you want to catch the rest of your stream, if you want to catch anything. But I do, do appreciate... You need to stop saying do, do. I do appreciate you bringing your friends over. And thank you so much for supporting the channel. So again, right now, my major focus right now is going to be drawing not just the outlines, but drawing shapes. So once I get the outside contour of anything, maybe the next thing is to draw these shapes. You see that? Like right now what I'm drawing is a shadow shape for the right side. Because this is what I I'm concerned about. At the end of the day, when you're doing a painting and doing a drawing that's going to be painted, this is what you're searching for. You're searching for these internal shapes. Because it doesn't matter how something is outlined. That tends to be kind of inconsequential, as opposed to the way that things are shaped, the way that planes actually exist, the way things are constructed. So. If you get those right, then that's basically all of your work done in the drawing. Okay, let's continue. We get this little line over there. Just evaluate that dark versus light. And it should be okay. And draw those shapes up. Doesn't matter if you're simple with the shapes, as long as they're roughly located where they can, where they need to be. Because again, don't waste a bunch of time trying to make sure things are absolutely perfect before getting the drawing. Because there's going to be variance while you're drawing anyway. So account for that variance while you work. So again, work with intention, but don't like make every stroke your magnum opus. That's going to be a difficult scenario. Again, draw those three-dimensional shapes. What exactly is the shape? The shape is just a two-dimensional container which kind of defines a three-dimensional form. That's what a shape is. Good night, Tens. Thanks for, thanks for stopping by. I do appreciate you. And I probably will see you when you wake up as well. I don't know how long I'm going to be streaming for, but it's probably going to be here for a while. Again, we have these nice, simple-looking shapes. Same thing over here, you see that triangle? That's all you're looking for right now. You're looking for that triangle. That triangle is going to give us so much information. It almost really benefits us to be nice and angular right now, because I'm not putting in too many curves in my drawing. I'm being very, very strict and very straight. And that serves a twofold purpose. Purpose number one is that it's much more easier to control straight lines than it is curves. Curves can be a little bit deceptive, especially if you're not used to using them. So keeping it nice and geometric is a good idea in general. And then further than that, because of how angular clothing folds can be, and how organic they sometimes are, it does benefit them to be a bit more geometric than maybe in the reference. Get a stronger read of it. Get a stronger visual clarity. So a few reasons, a few good reasons to uh, stick nice and basic on this kind of study. Are you planning to stream at this hour more often in the future? I don't think I will. But again, the stream set is going to be very variable, uh, depending on like how much work I get done during the day, and you know when I sleep or pass out, I guess. Because ideally, I just sleep in the night, wake up in the morning, and then get, do my work, right? But then sometimes I'm just I'm just so into it that I will work for hours and hours and hours, and then when I finally sleep, it's like the middle of the next day, and then it just wrecks my schedule. So either I got to get more disciplined about sleeping at the right time, or I'm going to have to just say that I'm not going to be streaming that consistently. Like today, I, I just didn't plan on streaming at all. I got my work done in the morning, but then later on during the day, I, I felt fine. 
and I felt like I didn't have that much to do towards the end of the day, and I just felt like it was a bad idea not to stream, because, you know, I could, so I did. Whenever I do stream, it's because I can stream. This kind of idea. But I don't feel bad about not being able to. And initially I planned to just review like the last time, but since, you know, I felt a little bit more of a pep in my step, I was like, yeah, fuck it, yeah, we can just uh, do a full stream. Gotta watch out, too much work can backfire. I know. But, you know, it's it's easier to uh, to just slam away at something, at least for me. Speaking of a screwed up sleep schedule, mine is well out of whack right now. Yeah, it does suck. So definitely a problem. There we go, that's a quick block in. 11 minutes to get this far. Do I care about the hands? To a certain extent, maybe. Just a little bit more of information here. Here, a quick little tip of, uh, for hands, especially coming from the boy Charlie, is separate out the pinky and the rest of the hand. Some people separate out the thumb. Thumb's fine, but the pinky is like, it's always going to give you a bit more information sometimes. Or just separate both of them out, right? That's fine. I'm Jack Platt right now. I've been entering micro sleeps and looking at the screen blankly all day. Yeah, no kidding. I'm on my six week break though, I tend to fall back into my night always. Well, I hope you've had some time to relax, though. That's what a break's supposed to be for. I know you're working really hard right now, but... I'm afraid to just take some time off. Okay. Let's do this in five values. That'll be fun to do. The value number one will be this. I'm just going to place my values on my canvas. That's one right there. That's two right there, lightest and darkest. I have the secondary shadow right there. That's three. That's second shadow. That's four, second light. And five, third light. There we go. Cheating? How's this cheating? This is the opposite of cheating. <laughs> So five values. All right, and now we can just simply finish the painting based on these values and be how, how you place them, right? So we just make these large little corrections right there. Ooh, I'm telling the. <laughs> what do you mean cheating? Okay, let me just not do not use selection tool on this one. I can just straight paint most of this. So I'll grab the second darkest dark value and just need to fill in these shapes right now. Just big, big fat brush, fill in that shape. I can be a little bit lazy with this because a lot of this is going to get covered with a lighter value. Again, nice and gradual. Just put the value where it needs to go. This is where the blocking method comes from your boy Jonathan Hardesty, by the way. Hardish is a really good artist. Great realistic painter. Also streams on Twitch. At uh, I think Jonathan Hardesty is his Twitch name. Great dude. A really, really good painter. So we start here, basic basic blocking. Right? Pick the darker value. Well, apply the darker value where it needs to go. Right there, right there, right there. Uh, a little bit right over here in that occlusion fold. Back there in that occlusion fold. A bunch over here. You are correct. I'm correct. Cool. I've been slogging it out. I've done like five, six paintings plus studies halfway through web design. The only thing I'm worried about is burning my inspiration though. It's been productive. I'm glad it's been productive. And don't worry about burning inspiration. You can always find, there's, there's always ways of finding more of it. And plus, uh, I don't know, whenever I'm hanging out with like creative people, I always feel a bit more inspired that way. And you hang out with like Maddie and all those other people, right? And it's hard to be more inspiring than with Maddie. Such a good artist, man. Holy shit. Maddie's so good. Let's put some lights on here. Let's just put the mid-tone light in a lot of these places. Also, I made a cardinal sin in this particular method, by the way. Do I have time to fix that sin? 
I do have time to fix that sim, because I can just do this. Hold on, since I have time to do that. I forgot to uh, fill the entire line art, uh, fill the block in with, uh, with the value. Because I don't want the base value to be my background value, that'll ruin the entire painting. That's a big oopsie. But thankfully I can correct it. Okay, that goes... The areas in the uh, in the lights go to my darkest light value, or my, my mid-tone light value, and areas in the dark go to my mid-tone dark value. These kinds of ideas. Big oops, you should be on my resume. How about Twitch artist? Twitch affiliated artist, the Epic Beast. So while I'm here, Let's throw in that light valley where it needs to go. Yo, my dude, you're a little bit too harsh, aren't you? That, that, that strong light valley is a little bit too burning my eyes. It's just slightly... I'm gonna slightly update that value. We'll update it to this. A little bit too strong. Coming off a little bit too harsh, my dude. Okay, let's put those half tones where they need to go. So half tone there. Half tone there. Up to in there. See, I'm not being precious with any of this. I mean, this should you. This has been on Twitch, I haven't really hit an art block. I've hit personal mental health blocks where I haven't had energy to paint. But not art block itself. Twitch is awesome in that respect, definitely. And just people in general, just knowing people like care about your work and all that stuff. It's, it's a nice thing. Okay. Just merge those two things. They're sitting nice and pretty. This idea over here. Hey, what the hell did I just merge? What are you? What are you? Oh, I see. But yeah, like I met an artist from India, like earlier today, on Reddit. And um, yeah, it was really fun talking to him. He's also trying to build up a portfolio or something. It was kind of great going back and forth, asked for a bunch of help. It was cool. I was reading too much fantasy at one point, suddenly it felt like there was no mystery anymore, like the whole fantasy world was defined. You don't want that to happen. Okay, let's be a little bit more clear on these. Remember, reuse is king. You can reuse, do reuse. Gotta get going now. Thanks so much for streaming. It was a pleasure as always. See you different. Thanks for hanging out. A lot of different times. Great, great artist. Really, really solid. Solid individual all around. Go check out our streams, her work. Sell to on Patreon. All that good stuff. It passed in like a week though. That sucks though. I mean, all of the, uh, all the wonder in the world is limited. Doesn't sound all, all that fun. Get the darkness where it needs to go. Some of the areas require a bit of a mid-tone value, so a little bit of mixing required. But for the most part, these five values will get me through. Also remember that when you choose five values, it'll tend to key up or key down the image depending on what your values are. So just be aware, it's not going to look the same always. But it will look coordinated, which is the point. I don't care if it doesn't look exactly the same, but if it's coordinated, that's all we care about. Because that means that we're doing what we need to do. Bring it in like that. Now I can be a bit more specific about my strokes. It's payday and I don't want to 
cook? What kind of food should this diva have delivered to her doorstop? Is that even a question? Indian food. Anthony, how's it going, dude? Yeah, I have pasta. Good to see you. How you been? Speaking of Kai, whatever happened to Hippie KY, man? What happened to Hippie Kai? Anybody see him around? What's that dude doing? I fucking miss that dude. Indian or Thai? Absolutely Indian or Thai. Get some Indian Thais. I don't know a few dudes. I will place an order for one James. <laughs> I do got some Indian Thais. That is known. A long time. I am well, I use my Mac. Now my new computer has been crashed. My goodness. That's unfortunate. Can you do like some ASMR call? <laughs> I actually have one floating around for a while ago. Somebody challenged me to do one. They asked me to do like one of those um, guided meditation things. Like you can feel. Or I actually did an Indian accent as well because it was requested. Just for fun for a friend. <laughs> it was so stupid. You feel all the energy coming down from your eyes all the way down through your trunk, going into your legs, and escaping through your feet. <laughs> that kind of thing. Hey, thanks, Miss Monster. Appreciate that. Thank you for the sub. Dude, that stuff is so creepy, though. Like Bonnie likes that kind of stuff, and I always say it reminds me of my. Uh, I can't believe you've done this. It reminds me of just a like a rapey Indian uncle. I don't like that. Archie Dog Mom, welcome. Thank you for the follow. We're doing a quick little clothing block in here using five values. But we just did this over here. We did this painting in Nar. I hope you like it. What are you guys reacting about? Come on. Listen, you didn't, you didn't come from where I came from, right? The, the parameters of being alive and, and well are a little bit different from where I hail, so let's keep that in mind. <laughs> well, you guys, I don't even know what you're clipping, honestly. There's a bit of a delay, so it could be anything. All right, let's continue. This quick little... little so it, everything is going to be slightly keyed up. I'm sorry, it's not going to be keyed up. It's going to be slightly more contrasted because, of course, the dark's chosen a little bit darker. Light shows in a bit lighter. But we don't have to care, care too much about this because it's going to represent the reference just fine. The question we have to ask ourselves is, is the representation a bit too harsh for our liking, right? And if it is, if at all it is, let me show you what you can do. What you can do is this. Simply adjust the levels of the drawing. Let's say it's a bit too contrasted. Then what I can do, I can have a full output range. But I can dim the overall effect this way. So now everything is keyed down, you see? It's a keyed down drawing. So now the darks aren't as harsh. That's something you can easily do, if it's ever getting a bit too harsh for you. I try to play with colors, but I think I do it wrong. Uh, did you submit anything on the Discord, Anthony, that I critted? Because I did do a bunch of crits at the start of the stream. So between the start of the stream and one hour, five minutes is the Discord review. So if you post anything to Discord, that's when it's done. So you have this liberty. So I might even key it down myself, right? Because I don't mind. Let's have a bit of a softer read right there. So this is perfectly possible. And there are so many methods that actually involve doing something like this. Like what some people will do when they're trying to draw the shadow shapes for their painting is that they will just slam down extremely harsh value. And then right after that, they'll key everything down and they'll selectively pick the values that they want to really show to their audience. And that's how they do their painting. It's 1.20 a.m. For me as well, Bale. I think we're in the same time zone. But get to bed. Don't be like me. You must be better than me. Get some of that dark where it needs to go. Just nice, simple value arrangement. We don't have to care about the details too much. Just nice and simple. Keep things well coordinated. Keep things, you know, within their limitations. That eventually things will form, things will start to look the way they need to. 
And then again, important to just respect the process, like what you're doing. It'll fall together. On critique and paint over, yeah, if you put anything over there, that should be uh, already done. So if you put something right now, I can look at it if you'd like, after this particular study. But uh, if you put anything before, that's already been critted. I went through everything. Hopefully everything, I don't know if I missed something. Your voice is so soothing, <laughs> I appreciate that. Thank you. But no, voice or no voice, gotta get to bed. I can't do it? Yeah, no problem. Let me see if I can help you out. Remember, simplification is the key. So if I don't simplify, things become harder. So we do try our best. Get those large, simple, evocative shapes. And once we're done, not much more to do in the painting. But add detail. And detail. My cat's some flag for saying this, but detail is quite a bit more easier than learning the fundamentals, right? Because everybody can do detail right off the bat, given enough time. And it's easy to miss the fundamental. Just slightly softening that up. I might even grab a couple of the values and kind of paint it in here as well. Just key down this area. Back, good to see you, Candice. Get in on this. There is a slight occlusion shape. You know what this reminds me of? This reminds me of the occlusion underneath waves. You ever do ocean studies? Well, if you remember this stream for a while, you have, because we've done ocean studies together. But when a wave, even though the wave is so white and it's like hitting the, um, the surface of the water, it creates a shadow, it creates a little bit of an occlusion on the bottom. And it's so, it's so pretty because it's surrounded by just pure white almost, or pure light value. And suddenly you have this darkness in the middle of it. It's awesome. It's, it looks good. Do you have a rough command? I do I do have a rough command, but it doesn't point towards this particularly. I wish I could point towards the Discord folder. But it requires my mods to update it and I don't really expect them to. Because it's just too much, too much work. I am off to bed. I do have a really busy day tomorrow. Friends coming over to celebrate my, celebrate my birthday. Well, happy birthday in advance. Well, technically it's already your birthday, so happy birthday to you. I do portrait some people's birthdays, by the way, so if you want to send me a picture of yourself, go ahead. I do at least a two hour piece. I did it for Bren last week. I'm cutting this out right now. So remember, you get that majority shape in, and then you cut things out with value. Easy peasy, right? Get that, that vague notion of something. And then paint in the detail. That's all you really need to do. Oh, I'm so sorry. Thank you. I'm celebrating with them early because it's the only day they can come over. I get that. I totally get that. We do the same thing back home as well. Because everybody's on different schedules. But I hope you have an amazing day. You deserve it. Get some light on there. Times, yeah, I know. Bit of shadow over here, for example. On the little contrasty side. So you know what, why that's happening? Quick little pause here. But you know why this is happening? So the question is, why isn't everything here? This value? Well, what's happening is that we do have a core shell right there. But there's a bunch of reflected light coming all the way down here. That's one, one little thing right there. Right? And then it bounces from there onto here. It goes there. And that's why it lightens up this little corner. So in order to paint that, we first kind of paint that darkness in. So you first paint this darkness in like that, for example. So this entire face is going to be dark. That's a local value, basically. And then what you can do is you can sample this value and then lightly paint that back in there. So you kind of achieve that same quality of bounce light. This is what it is, right? It's bounce light. And then just paint it appropriately. So it's a way of breaking down the value in a way that makes sense. Otherwise, you might be stuck painting that forever. Or you'd be like, okay, why is this happening? It's much easier to kind of figure out why things are happening and then structure it accordingly. And things make a lot more sense. That's a cool thing, by the way. That's a good takeaway. I don't think about that too often. I don't think about the, the light bouncing off clothes. I know how light works, but not every like example of how it works, right? So that's why doing studies is important. Like, just because you know a concept doesn't mean you know everything about it. 
It's good to just learn, just see what all the examples of things happening, kind of contextualize your information. And hopefully at the end of it, you really have a strong understanding of what things actually mean. Do you have some tips for the relativity of colors? Okay, so color relativeness. So instead of the relativeness of color, what they're pointing towards is the idea of things are warmer and cooler, but relatively warmer and cooler. There's no such thing as an objective warm and a cool. Most of the time, things are just warmer and cooler with respect to each other. So uh, the best tip, I mean, it depends on the actual context of this question, because I don't know what that is. Uh, but if you want to understand the concept a bit better, also I didn't pause, unpause my timer, but this is still paused. The idea is this, right? So let's see if you understand this concept, which is if you have any sort of color over here, right? If you have a blue, if you have a blue warm, let's say, or a nice little cool, cool blue like that, and you have a lovely warm brown like this. If I bring a gray into here to this context, it will read cool. I'm going to read grain at this context, it will read warm. This and this is the exact same, like the value and color. These are both gray. So why is that? That's because this gray is less blue than this blue. AKA, it is much warmer than this blue. It's much more distance away from this blue. Why is that? Because of this. Because the way that distances work on the color wheel, it's twofold. So if I can find my mouse real quick, I don't know where it's gone. Did I disconnect it accidentally? There it is. So what that means is that if I want to end up from... So if I want to get less blue, what does less blue mean? I can go this way, that's less blue. I can go this way, that's also less blue, right? This is way, way not blue. That's the opposite color, right? Or I can go this way, saturation. So this gray is heading away from this blue, right? It's complementing this blue which means that it's going to read warm, so it's complementing, right? The same thing goes for just straight up blue and a desaturated version of that blue. Even that reads warmer, right? Relatively warmer, this kind of idea. It's a really important thing to understand because then you'll be able to utilize the power of the gray more and your idea of color accuracy will be much better. So once you figure this out and try to apply it to studies, you'll be able to do some very, very interesting observations. Because let's just say you see a field of blue, a, fi a field of blue in your cast, nice saturated blue sky, and you see some red on there. So how does this help you out? Well, you will think to yourself, well, that's a warm, that's a red against a field of blue. But because I understand relativeness of a color, what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna pick a red that's this saturated because I don't need to. I can pick a red that's this saturated and get a good read, but this might be too much of a read. So I can pick this value, let's say, and that'll look very, very strong in comparison to the background, right? But what if one did not understand this concept, one might do this. And that just seems way, way too strong. It seems way too, it's out like a sword thumb, you'd never see this amount of saturation in an unedited picture, right? But this makes sense, it coordinates better because I maintain that same coordination because of relativeness. Some, some thoughts to think about. Yeah, no problem then. Let's get those nice angular shapes out there. I'm not quite sure how much I want to really rely on my lines here. Because I don't do a very strict blocking on this. So I'm just painting over half the time. Some reliance, but not too much, I think, is the answer. And again, this is like a, what, a 35, 40 minute study? So I can just leave the lines in there and be perfectly content, I'm gonna be honest. And those little spikes right there, Not those spikes, but those folds. So what's really happening there? That means that the, the clothing's going this way, this way, this way, and this way. Which means you have light here, light here, light here, and then darkness on this side. That's what's happening. So, very cool thing to put that kind of fold in there. That's what's going to really kind of give you that clothing fold feel. I see, I, I put a little bit of that in some of these drawings over here. So, these are very quick little 25 minute sketches. You can see even here I'm doing this, it's the same kind of triangular idea. 
a lot of these regions. You got triangular shape here. Same ideas. Should probably push it a bit more than already there. At this point, I can start getting rid of some of the lines that I don't need because they're kind of some of the overall gesture lines are ruining some of my reads. So I can get rid of some of them, especially the ones that go through shapes. I believe a few. I tried this with my digital, but I think it's more Gary than the background CD. I need to train more. It's more it's more grey in the background. Right. Well you seem to have a handle of it. Yeah, do let me know if you have an issue. Here to help. Okay. The really important thing we haven't really noted in this particular study is the idea of always trying to reuse whenever you can, right? So certain colors over here can easily be reused if you choose to use them again and again. And in fact, it's something that you should be looking for as an artist on every single thing that you paint. Because you don't have a, like a huge number of individual unique values and colors in the canvas. In fact, if you do, you shouldn't. Because that makes things far too complex. We can have, however, is the same value used in multiple ways, using multiple areas, right? That idea of reuse is such a strong idea. It really aids in the notion of speed, the notion of coordination. It's just, just so powerful. I highly recommend looking at videos like by James Gurney and whoever, try to figure out where they reuse their colors, how they think about doing it. I go back and look at it all the time. This is very, very helpful. Just realizing that how simple paintings are. Like going back to that little, but so important information from Richard Schmidt, which is the artist sees more, and I'm sorry, artist sees less but not more. You see less of the world, you simplify the world. A painting is not meant to be as complex as the world, it's supposed to be a simplification of it. Right? Which means that you shouldn't be trying to draw everything, you shouldn't be trying to capture every single detail. Kind of ruins what makes it a painting. Thinking about the structure of this really helps, by the way. I came here for the art, but stayed for JJ body rolls while painting. <laughs> body rolls. I was gonna put that. Good to see. We just did this painting over here in an hour. We're doing one more in like 45. Hello Punto, by the way, does photo editing on stream. That's an all round cool individual. Go check him out. Oh, what have I done? Nice to hear you. Yeah, it's good to see you as well. I don't usually stream at this point, at this time, so it's nice that I get to see all my friends. <laughs> Punto! Yeah, follow Punta. So again, we have this nice dark voluminous area in here. And now we can just slightly bring in some of that reflected light, you see? So you simplify first into dark, and then over here you can start bringing in those little bits of reflectance, little bits of bounce, and kind of delineate a bit more in that area. So it's painting a light in a dark, right? So it's gotta be in a dark first. Think about that that way. Because if I do something like this, see how that kills the structure? Of course, nobody's gonna make that big of a mistake, but people make mistakes that are close to that. They kind of kill the overall read of light versus dark, but with the notion of visual clarity, we have to remember that the things in the dark need to look like they're from the dark, the things in the light need to look like they're from the light. We can't play around with this idea too much. Right? That's important. I'm coming to say hello, and it's late here in the, it's in the Switzerland. I have, have a nice day, bye. Thanks one more time. No problem, dude. Good luck on the painting and do let me know if you have any more questions always post in the discord if you have one happy to help and lie on here it's nice and simple just figure out where things are pointed and then justify it why do you use creative over other software so when i first came back to painting in general i wasn't sure if i'd stick with it and right now it seems almost comical because 
I paint every single day. So I didn't want to make too much of an investment. So I started painting in Krita and I just continued because I wasn't taking it all that seriously. But then with the past of the time, my uh, fervor when it comes to painting didn't diminish even slightly. In fact, it grew tremendously. And so I just started painting more and more with the software. And I developed something that I call software comfort, which is I don't have to think any about anything that I'm doing in terms of the software, I can just paint. And it takes a little bit of time uh, to develop that on any software. But Photoshop is a lot more robust, a lot more, it runs a lot better on the computer. And I do have it now. So I do paint a lot with Photoshop off stream, but partly because of the requests by people that view the stream and also because of the fact that it's a free program. So people coming in here thinking that, okay, I, I want to learn how to paint. Wait, wait a second, I can't afford Photoshop. It becomes a lot more accommodating for the viewer. So that's why whenever I paint on stream, I will continue to paint on, with Krita because I think it's just overall um, kind of suits the purposes of the stream a bit better. But honestly, I mean, I do a lot of my portfolio work in Krita as well um, because I'm just comfortable in it. So with the kind of work that I do, I don't really need what Photoshop offers all that much. And past a certain point, the only reason to learn is because I'm probably going to have to use it in whatever studio I get into, if I get into a studio. Yeah, but that's, that's the long and short of it. Hopefully that answers the question. Thirty-two minutes in. The only time I used the approach was when I was painting with oils, watercolor is loose and hard to predict sometimes. Yeah, watercolor, oddly enough, uh, Punto, I've made this comment to a few people uh, and to some professionals and they think the opposite, you know? They think that watercolors are, are a lot more controllable than oils and I still don't know why. Maybe I should paint in oils and find out. That makes no sense to, to your boy, I have no idea why that is. I'm not always curious if people make these decisions on that, like where's it coming from? What is the reasoning? Get some of these lighter values in here. You don't have to be painted with an extreme amount of specificity. You can go kind of crazy. Because again, it's away from our area of focus, but again, you can't go nuts with it. You have to maintain that value. Because even in abstraction, the important thing to note is that you might abstract something, it might look good, it might look fine, but there's this notion of maintaining the abstraction that needs to be considered when you're doing any sort of abstraction. So when I say abstraction, that means you don't, you're not trying to paint something directly, you're trying to evoke it. And by, by which I mean you paint the impression of something as opposed to you painting it directly. That's the idea of painting with abstraction. Now, when you do paint something indirectly, right? So you paint the lights in the dark, you don't really have outline it or whatever. You have to maintain that value because if you don't, then that just makes it read like a sore thumb. It just makes it that much more out of place. It doesn't, it doesn't fit with the uh, rest of the picture. These kinds of problems start to arise. I just don't want those kind of problems in your painting. So maintaining the abstraction, that's what they call it. Very, very powerful. So when I say maintain, that means don't draw hard as a soft, but you don't, don't have to not draw it, but you have to consider it at least strongly. So don't draw a hard with a soft. Don't uh, draw a pattern when none exists. Don't draw no pattern when a pattern actually exists. I'm guilty of that, by the way. I draw a bunch of big cats. I love drawing big cats. One of my favorite things to paint. But when I'm drawing big cats sometimes, especially the ones with stripes, like tigers, leopards, well, leopards are spots, but you get the idea. I tend to not draw them with a pattern and it ruins my work. It just ruins it. It just flattens out the entire drawing. Because again, there is a pattern there that I'm not respecting. So valid consideration to be made. Watercolor mixes with the paper uh, oil paints are uh, still fresh, you can wipe it, spread it, mix it for a long period of time. Yeah, the, the whole a la prima style painting in oils, it's basically uh, basically that, right? A la prima is cool to watch, I've seen a few people do it. I see Kuriyami do it on stream all the time. Uh, I've never seen Peppo do it. I'm curious if you sleep, <laughs> not as much as I should. And that's the price you pay, I guess. Sometimes when I want to brute force a shape, I will just brute force it with selection tool. Oopsie, didn't want to do that. 
Welcome back to Stonefly. Or Kai, I think is how everybody calls you. I think I'm not the only person that I've ever met that uh, calls you Stonefly. School is starting again soon. I need to fix my sleeping schedule. Yeah, yours is more degenerate than mine, Abs. After class, take care. See you, Light. Thanks for stopping by, dude. You've been here for a while. I do appreciate you. I'll see you in a, in a bit. See you later. Have a good, uh, have a good time at class. Teach him something. You're one of the last that caused me Stonefly? Yeah, I do have noticed. So, example of um, comparison, right? I'm thinking about this value. So I was about to go all the way here to my color selector. And then I thought, okay, well, this value is about similar to this value, right? So all I have to do, since I have the value already selected, is I just grab right there. I just grab that value and I just paint it in. Again, it saves me so much time. So I always consider that. So I'm being a lot looser with the shapes over here, by the way, in the knee, because I don't really care uh, away from the area of focus, which is the head. So as much as I can simplify over here, I'm trying to. Probably doing a shitty job at it, but such is the life we lead. Oils take longer to dry. How much thinner you have it can ruin layers below. I've heard that some oil paints are still drying up till this day. Like they've laid the paint just so thick. On top of it, they're still drawing till this day. How crazy is that? What the hell is happening? Okay, my layers all messed up. Layers dance game. We're using them right now because I have to use so many layers for my portfolio work. I'm just used to using them right now. Look, every sketch over here is uh, every sketch over here is uh, about. Three or four layers. Jesus, Bonnie. Is that a Bonnie raid right there? Welcome, guys. How's it going? Todd. How's it going, guys? Good to see you. Good boy, Indian abroad. You know me. You see me uh, just giving everybody a terrible, terrible day <laughs> in Bonnie's stream. It's a bag raid. How's it going? How's it going, Bonnie? How's it going, friends? If you guys are not familiar with Miscellaneous Candy Art, one of my best friends on the Twitch, definitely go check her out. I like to make her life a living hell, but uh, she is good company to hang out with. Go check out her stream. And guys, welcome to my stream. My name is Indian Abroad, aka James. I am a study streamer. I just did this study over here in 60 minutes. I painted this one. It's a dog and her four ducklings. But if you want to see more of my work, you are more than welcome to check out my Instagram. I sometimes draw streamers. If you guys do not know Bonnie, this is Bonnie. I made an attempt at painting her visage. Came out pretty okay, I think. And some other work that I've done. I do a lot of work. Some other streamers right there. A bunch of kitty cats. A bunch of horsies. We did this with Bonnie. I sometimes dual stream with her. We did this um, these studies along with her. And they were just a buttload of fun. We had a good time. My comfort zone is traditional gouache painting. So I struggle with digital painting. I find it so helpful. Thank you. I appreciate that. And let me tell you something about gouache painting. Some of the best painters, some of the best digital painters of all time, when they coach people, they make them do gouache. Because when you understand tiling and gouache, that gives you such a head start. With painting digitally, you have no idea. So you're actually in an advantageous position right now. So just jump in and start. Just jump in and start and do as best as, best as you can. And then run it by me or run it by yourself. Look at the videos. You know, if you want some tutorials, they're on the Discord. And always, always keep doing the work. But you'll be absolutely fine. So don't worry about it. You are ahead of most people already. Cheers, Shai. Have a good night. I'm glad to see you sleeping. Yeah, some examples of my work. For the puppy. <laughs> I love this study. So cute. Thanks for the raid, Bonnie. How is the hammer going? Bonnie's been doing a series of the 13 ghosts, if you guys know that. It's uh, something of a cult classic. It has your boy Shaggy. So she's been really uh, grinding away with that and been doing a fantastic job, if I do say so myself. Hammer's coming along, I like it. Yeah, you do like the more grotesque ones. Maybe that's why you hang out with me. From Scooby-Doo? Yeah. Scooby from Shaggy-Doo. Peace out, Ghost Cards. See you, Nathan. Thanks for the heads up uh, before. 
I'm headed out too, I need to get off my ass because I've been sitting on it for two hours. Gotta watch out for the deep vein thrombosis, man. Oh fuck. I can't believe you've done this. Cheers, Nathan. Thanks, man. And thank you, Bonnie, for the raid. Bonnie, put your Instagram in the chat. Slam it in there. Well, how's it going, Iris? Good to see you. Are you betraying me by hanging out in Bonnie's instead of my stream? You don't like me anymore? Is that the case? I understand. That happens to most people. Traitor. Let's continue with a very casual block in. Also, um, just a note. Um, all of my work is on the YouTube. At least a lot of the work that I've done is on YouTube right now. So if you guys ever want, if you missed a study or whatever, uh, at least recently, all that work is on YouTube. So if you want to check that out, um, and I know, I know Twitch vlogs are kind of problematic. So if you want to just check that out, you can on YouTube right now. I'm trying to be good about uploading all that stuff there. So yeah, shameless plug into my YouTube channel, but it's just for study review because I know people like to catch a stream when they can. When they can't, rather. I was looking in Bonnie's, Bonnie's stream too. Yeah, but I don't want you in here. I want Iris in here. No, I still like you as much, but Bonnie is such a darling. Oh my goodness, she actually said it. She actually went there. You think... You think... Oh. My heart. You always have a place in my chat. You have a mod in my chat, just to point that out. So at least I, I recognize your abilities. Alright, stop fighting over my people, Bonnie. Stop stealing my, my viewers. <laughs> Can you blame me? She's a mate. Oh my goodness, don't stop it. Stop it, Iris. You don't know her. <laughs> Have you ever tried doing studies with Bonnie and see what she does with the timer? It's just such outright abuse. It's a human rights violation. I'm just so taken aback. I don't I don't use you for no compensation now. I just enjoy you for you. Oh, here we go. The manipulator, the master manipulatress comes out of hiding. Don't you have a class to go to, Bonnie? Do you have a class to go to, by the way? What class is it today? It's that same idea over here. A bit of reflected light. So it goes into Core Shadow, and then a bit of reflected. That logic holds everywhere. So what do we do? We paint in that shadow. We go paint in right there. And then we just paint in that reflected. It's a lovely little bit of layering right there. You can't see that reflected because my damn lines are in the way, but you know. It's a quicker study, so we have two minutes left, by the way, on the study. So what can we do with this two minutes? Let's add a bit of just a bit of texture, a bit of form form on this little study here. So a few of these little areas over here, can go over with a bit of texture. Can add a bit more context. I'm just sampling directly off my canvas, by the way. I don't really care too much about adding in a new value at this point, but just adding a bit more information in certain areas. You're breaking his heart into tiny into tiny pieces. Exactly, that's what you're doing. All the love she gets instead of sticking to the clock, though. Some things can't be beaten by the clock. I'm gonna beat. I'm gonna beat Bonnie with the clock when I see her. One of those big old alarm clocks. Have a great stream. Uh, take care of Irish. She means a lot. You leaving? I'm gonna take Momo for a walk. We're gonna try out her new sleep. Ah, oh, I can't wait. Be safe, two of you. Yeah. Thanks for the raid, Bonnie. I do appreciate that. Go follow Bonnie again if you guys haven't. Excellent streamer. She's a good person in general. Not as good as Iris might think she is, but she is very good. Even I must admit that. Beautiful fall right there, right? You see that? We just carve it out of the darkness. Keep things nice and coordinated. That's that's why we initially put that darkness in there, right? So everything in the dark, it stays in the dark. We have that strong value coordination. That value hierarchy is what they call that. The hierarchy of value. What's in the dark stays in the dark, what's in the light stays in the light. Because if I put a value like this, uh-oh, that's a that's a bit of a question mark right there. Why is that there? It looks almost like it's floating. If I put this value in there, that's a question mark. Why is that there? So he thinks nice and cohesive. That's what we do what we do. Give money a hug for me. Money is such a cute dog. Oh, My fuck. goodness. I can't believe you've done this. Goblin fodder. How's it going, man? Good to see you. Dude, I've been playing a shit ton of RuneScape, pardon my language. But I've been playing a lot of RuneScape recently. Because what happens is at the end of my day, 
I'm just so tired these days that I just flop onto my bed, but I, I'm too wired to sleep. So I just need something to just, you know, just something to cut the the edge off a little bit. So I'll be using RuneScape as a as a way of just calming down at the end of the day. And it's just hilarious the way that I play it. Are you going to turn this value to color? No, of course not. It's just value. Overwatch is here. You're playing Overwatch again? What's new in abs? What's new in abs? What's new in Overwatch that's making you play these days? Again, simply just cut that value out with Shadow. We don't have to be too specific with this, but be a little bit careful in digital art that when you use a selection tool, you see what happens here? Even though the shape is exactly how I drew it, what happens is that it leaves me with this pixel perfect edge, which is extremely sharp. And if you guys paint a lot, you know how powerful edges are and how important they are. So when you do something like that, be careful right after you finish it. Attempt to maybe slightly adjust that edge. So either you can feather it in the options. They have an option called feathering selection, which kind of slightly softens the edge. Or you can just use an airbrush or something like that. And just manually soften that area up. So the reason is harsh. They have roll cue now. No kidding. Roll cue. That means you cue a support or whatever and you get the roll. Well, people must love that. I think... Uh, James and Siege and everybody play as well. Now I'm stuck here playing RuneScape and drawing pictures all day. Feels actually not too bad. I'm having, uh, yeah, these have been some good days for me. It's been busier than you can imagine, but it's been good. It's been very good, it's been very fulfilling. I've been really enjoying myself. So yeah, maybe there's something to this whole art thing. When you think clothing, think triangles, right? You gotta think triangles. Also, our time's up, by the way. Look at this light one. Look at the line breakdown. That was fun. Second study of the day. No more five healers in one team making an insta loss as they need to flex the roles they aren't comfortable with. I see. Okay, so does it lock you into the meta? Like, how do they determine how many goes into each? Like, aren't there like different metas where there are more healers or whatever? Let me export this. If you guys have the time, so usually this happens, I don't usually stream at this particular time in the day, but whenever I do stream at a normal time, people do paint along with me. So if you're interested in doing that at whenever you're at your, at your soonest leisure or convenience, paint it and then put it in the Discord. I mean, I usually have a review. Like if you, the VOD's available on the stream, you can look at the review in the first hour of the stream. If you'd like to see uh, what I had to say about the work on the Discord. It's set to 222, so even in the league is not set to 22. Really? No kidding. I would think that the, there's a lot more like variants. There you go, that's my study. If you guys did this along, do post. I think we have a, a person or maybe people in there. I know Canvas is going to do this as well with us. I do have plans to start drawing along with your studies. I already took my iPad out again. And refreshing on the tools and brushes because you go super fast. I have to be very no. You don't have to stick to the time limit. Remember the time is the time limit is just for me. Um, but definitely take your time with your work. Don't ever rush things. Especially if you're just trying to get some enjoyment out of it. Like to be a professional, to be like to get anywhere in the industry, we gotta we gotta always think about the time, right? So I have to think about the time, but you don't have to have fun with it. That's the most important thing. If you aren't having fun, then what's the point? I don't stick to the timer, it's true. He's a filthy, filthy cheater, this boy. Okay, that's our two studies. That's my mandatory every single day. Timer one, timer two. Very diverse topics, but fun and useful for me because I need to do a bunch of clothing rendering uh, on all of these because I need to... These are initial initial sketch, sketches for my characters, but I need to do a bunch of rendering on them to bring them up to this level. Where's that level? Where's my... Angela Chen references. I'll show you the level that I want to get these. Right there. So, I have a little bit of work. I'd say I have maybe an hour of work on each of them, and I have 15 total sketches. So I have 15 hours of work. Post a whip, Canvas. Post a whip. And when you finish it, post that as well. I tried Crete last night. It was a nice experience. Having a habit of turning my laptop like I'm turning a piece of paper. 
Yeah, what you can do, DT, if you want to turn things, is as you paint, just hit shift and space, lets you free rotate. You can free rotate things um, whenever you want. Why not do this on stream? So I will be doing tonight's on stream, but usually I'm going to focus, but tonight is a bit more brain dead than usual because I just had to do some more um, sketches, but I wanted to spend some time to just really figure out what I'm doing. Yeah, but I might do some of this on stream today. I'm going to heat up some pasta though in the meantime. Let me just actually do that really quickly before we review. I'm not going to mute my microphone for this, but... Um... Also, DT, uh, I can't hear my music right now, but you can hit 3, 4, 5, 6 to instant rotate. So 4 on the, on the uh, numbers, 4 and 6, tilt it. These kinds of things. They're yeah, useful. Okay, I need to heat my pasta up. There's a lot more in here than I remember. How much have I eaten today? Alrighty. And that's all sorted. Today, rip sleep schedule? Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna be up to like 10 in the morning abs. Believe you me. Hey James, reporting from a new place. Just went to a party. I'm gonna sleep. Just wanna say hello and hope all is well. All is well, Azar. Thanks for, thanks for stopping by. I'm just showing off some portfolio stuff. Some uh, initial character sketches, some silhouette and stuff. I'm going to my uh, my work, some initial orthographics, a whole bunch of stuff. Okay, let's do a review. Maybe we could end, actually, because I want to chill for a bit. Because it's going to get really early in the morning, and I have no idea how my stream's going to operate at that time. Because I've had a nice long stream. Done a review on the Discord, done two studies, I think I'm happy. I'm gonna stop talking at some point, but then I'll be asleep. I still have to see a version of your girl in armor. My girl in armor vision? Wait, what do you mean, Iris? You know, I'm gonna have to jog my memory here. Okay, let's check the Discord real quick. We have... Kipye, good job, dude. So, the one thing I'll point out here is that things are a little bit excessively round in regions. But what I want you to think about is this. So let's go back to Discord Capture for a second. So here's something to think about. I can have a circular object, a circular disk, let's say, like this, right? But if I fold it in the middle, what I end up with is this. So you see how straight and sharp that is in these regions? That's something I wanted to think about when drawing anything that's clothing based, because even the edge of the clothing can be like nice and beautiful and you know, lovely and wispy. It creates all these folds in between, and these folds, those folds go heavily into like the triangularness, into the, into the angleness, into the harsh, harsh straightness. This kind of idea. So do consider that when you're painting clothing folds, because ultimately that'll really it's what's going to sell the idea of what you're looking at is actually cloth, because you're thinking the right way to begin with, and this is the way that a lot of people think. They think, okay, cloth, so everything's going to be nice and loose. But it turns out that those harshly biting shadows, those triangular shadows, that's really what gets you that cloth read. But think about that when you're doing these kind of studies. But your values look strong, and your overall proportion looks strong, so good job. Really good job. I like girls in armor, but I've never seen you draw them, so it would be great to see you draw that ideal armor vision. Well, I've drawn a few girls in armor uh, in the studies. Uh, we have, like, if you go up here for a little bit, I'm sure we'll come up on a few of them. Like, I think Sun Eater did one over here. It's a great piece, by the way, Sun Eater. Uh, I need to add you to the squad. Do that real quick. Nice. But, uh, also, we do a lot of work here, by the way, if you guys are new to the channel. Uh, where are some girls in armor? I'm sure they're somewhere over here. Jesus Christ, how much fucking work do we do? Um, where are we? 
That's a grumpy cat. That's an elephant. That's a dude in armor. We're getting closer. Armor is now a check mark. <laughs> that little funny looking fox. Another dude in armor. Another dude in armor. That's Bren. Bren nailed it. It was her birthday the other day. It's gotta be something over here. Are those who study in the squad? I gotta get in there. You gotta get in there. Iris, I promise you. I promise you there's somewhere over here. I think it's in this stream, maybe. That's a lizard. <laughs> That's a dog. Have I just not... <laughs> Is my memory just gone? Dude, look at TNP's work, man. It's so fucking good. Love that study. It's just so... Ah, oh, there we go. Found it. There you go, Iris. There's one girl in armor. There's another girl in armor right there. I do them every now and again. Okay, that's mine right there. Not a bad job. The lines are a bit too restrictive. I should have gotten rid of them earlier on. I joined the lizard, the nostalgia. Yeah. Angevir got raided by Maddie. I know, I, I was lurking in her uh, in her chat. Posted a brush test in sketchbook share. It's not a study book. I want to see the brush test. But good job on this so far. Looking mighty strong. Can't wait to see this finished. And, and definitely, I don't even want to see this, this, this desaturated stuff. Keep it in this, like, ochre tan color. I do like that a lot. Lovely warms. Yeah, Maddie Raids are insane. Dude, I get, like, so, I get maybe five times as many followers on a Maddie Raid than usual. That and, like, Salisse. Dude, that's so cool, Canvas. Is that digital still? Fucking hell. What are you using? What are you eating? That's nutty. Alright. Well, let's call the stream over there, right? That was really fun. Because I want to just sit back eat my pasta. I was actually planning on streaming to the night, but I'm, gonna be, I'm just going to work to the night, I think. I think I prefer to do that. I was considering it, but then I'm like, yeah, how do I really feel? <laughs> but yeah, this is my mandatory. This, this was my mandatory two studies and review, and that is done. Here are our two studies and our review. So we are going to go raid somebody right now. Thanks guys, thanks guys so much for stopping by and being so kind to me with the follows and the subs and the uh, and the bits. I do appreciate all of you. I'm starting school on Monday. I'm so motivated to learn. I'll do a study with you all soon. Don't worry. Yeah, make sure you focus on school though. That's what's important. All right, who do we raid? Do we raid the boy Dominic Domo Stanton, the Thunder Domo? Could I raid Young Khan. Oh, I can raid Jen. Oh Jesus. Less than three, less than three, less than three, less than three. <laughs> less than three back at you, Iris, thank you. Okay, who's sitting lower? Who's sitting lower in the arch section? How about we raid somebody randomly? That'd be nice, right? Nice little random uh random raid. Jesus Christ, we have fifty people in here. Okay. <laughs> let me uh let me let me look. Anybody have suggestions on new people? I'm actually starting class Monday also. Fancy. What are you learning? I'm not going to call you mom and I'm not going to call you dog, so I'm going to call you Archie. What are you learning, Archie? Oh my goodness. Name that girl just went live. That's who we're going to raid. If you want to know top, like, top three streamers of all time on Twitch, this girl is always in that category. All right, so she just started. She just started, so she's going to be a little bit AFK. But I'm going to raid her anyway, because i got to get out of here. We're going to raid Steph. Did Steph, honestly, one of my favorite places to be on Twitch. Just having her in the background just improves my day in general. So we are going to give her a boost, because I think she's trying to raise money for her broken car. She's such a sweetheart, and I know you love her. So when you get there, check out her Instagram first and foremost for you guys to... Uh, just to get an idea of what she's all about. Let me show you her Instagram. Let me just pop it in here. If you want to see it. There you go. We'll raid Wade another time. Wade is awesome and I have raided him before. But yeah, that's her Instagram. Go check her out. She's honestly such a joy to be around. And I will see you guys over there. Be kind, make sure you follow, and I will see you tomorrow for some more studies. Have a good night. Cheers.